Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, August 12, 2021 meeting. We are prepared, as we prepared to open the meeting, here are some of the guidelines. Public meetings are now open to the public. This public hearing is being televised live on TV, County Government Channel 95, and the county's YouTube channel. It will remain available on demand viewing on the St. Mary's County Government YouTube channel. Okay, roll call. My name is David Willemborg, and I'm the chairman. To my right, we have Leonard Cole, member. To my left, member uh, Richard Watts. And at the end is member Barbara Hill. In the audience, we have Tammy Hildebrand, our administrator, Chris Beaver, our attorney, Susie Dean, a recording secretary, Kevin Hall, our inspector, and Sergeant Steve Myers, who is our alcohol enforcement coordinator officer. Right. Approval agenda is the first thing. <clears throat> Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion we approve the agenda. Barbara. Hill makes a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second, second that motion. We have a second from member um, Cole. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Unanimous. Thank you. Next is to approve the minutes from the uh, July 8th, 2021 meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review them? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I can make a motion to approve the minutes as written for July 8th, 2021. So we have a motion to approve the minutes as written for July 8th, 2021. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Member Cole seconds the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Passes. Thank you. New business. Violations. So the first is um, Lynn Sue on behalf of Lang Sue, sale of alcoholic beverage to a person under the age of 21 in violation of Section 6304 of the Alcoholic Beverage Article of the Anticoded Code of Maryland and Section 5.04J of the rules and regulations of this Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please swear her in. Yeah. Would you please rise, please? Swear you in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? True. Yes. Please state your name and uh, home address for the record. My name is Lin, L-I-N-X-U. Um, address 156 Willock Police Circle, SS, Maryland, 21221. Thank you. Okay. So. You want? You're okay. Okay, okay now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I do have a, a letter from her brother, who is the owner, Lang Zhu. Yes. Um, would you like to see this? Yes, please. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, I've reviewed the letter that you're reviewing right now from Mr. Lang Zhu, who is the licensee. Yes, sir. And um, she, uh, he has given durable power of attorney to his sister, Miss um, Lin Zhu, to represent the licensee at this hearing. Okay. Thank you. So, Lin Zhu, do you, do you admit that this violation took place? Or not? What do you mean? He's asking. He's asking um, whether you contest the charge or whether you admit to it. Did it happen or didn't it happen? Uh, yeah. It did happen. Okay. So sorry, very sorry. I sold under twenty-one. 
um, two fireball manage so, for the one person. So yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Mr. Beaver, do you want to read the um, the facts into the record? Yes, Mr. Chairman, as the um, as Ms. Lin Zhu is um, pleading not guilty, along with the licensee, we'll enter the uh, a statement for of facts into the record. On May 29th, 2021, at 1137 AM, St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent in a Sheriff's Office cadet, um, 19 years of age, into A&B Liquors, located at 28260 Three Notch Road in Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Once inside, the cadet approached the register area and requested two 50 milliliter bottles of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey from the clerk, later identified as Miss Lin Zhu. Ms. Sue retrieved the requested alcoholic beverages and placed them on the counter and proceeded with the sale. Ms. Sue failed to ask the cadet uh, for any identification for proof of age. Uh, the cadet completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the, li the licensed premise with the alcoholic beverages. The cadet thereafter reported to Corporal John Kirkner, a member of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit outside the licensed premise. Um, the cadet described the sale of the alcoholic beverages to Corporal Kirkner and thereafter, Corporal Kirkner and Sergeant Myers, the St. Mary's County Alcohol Enforcement Officer, entered the licensed premise, identified themselves, and informed Ms. Sue that she had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage Sheriff's Office cadet without asking for any identification. Ms. Sue expressed to the officer regret for making the sale, um, but could not provide an explanation for why she did not ask for identification. Photographs of the alcoholic beverages were taken by members of the alcohol enforcement unit. Uh, the beverages were poured out and the bottles disposed of. Uh, the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County was notified of this incident by the Sheriff's Office. The um, Alcoholic Beverage Board of St. Mary's County issued summonses to the license holder, Mr. Lang Zhu, and the clerk, Mrs. Lin Zhu. Uh, Mrs. Lin Zhu, uh, Ms. Lin Zhu was um, granted a durable power of attorney by Mr. Zhu, Mr. Lang Zhu, to appear on behalf of the licensee. And all these, uh, all this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Okay, so we have we we have a um, a, a mission that it that it took place. Um, does anybody in the board have any questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, does this licensee had any other prior violations? Nothing in the last three years. Nothing in the last three years. Um, Ma'am, how long have you been working at the um, at the package store? Um, ten years. How How long? Ten years. I never sell. Ten. Ten? Ten years? Okay, thank you. Was there anything that took place that caused you to make a mistake? Yeah, I chill all the time because uh, I just got the Corona-19. Uh, I got the shot, it's a fever. I closed the one day. After one day, I my now sale is very slow. I cannot close again. This I continue. Open. Okay. So you so you were you were ill from the, after getting a shot. Yeah. Okay. But I know this is not reason to talk about the sale the under twenty one. Yeah, that's a serious violation, ma'am. Sorry, but then right now. I do the, I put the sign on the wall. My English is not too good. I write down your case. My Chinese is non existent, so <laughs> my apologies. Thank you.
she's showing us photographs of the um, the requests for people to be ID'd. Any other members have any questions while pass it on? Mm -hmm. So we'll Go ahead and proceed with the next part because this isn't going to change the uh, the next part of the process. So um, at this time, I need a motion from somebody from the board to say that this offense ha took place or it did not. And she's Correct. already admitted that it's taken place. And she's place. already admitted it. So now it's just a matter of whether the board would wish to pose a penalty or not. Okay. And so if we'll so, what penalty, pe pe okay. penalty phase. One. I'm thinking. Um, the administrator is pointing out to me that just to make sure that you're aware that it's there are two different charges. There's one for the licensee for the store and yes. then one for the clerk. Yes. Correct. Okay. We're, we're right now we're. <clears throat> yes. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. Huh? I was not aware of that. There was two different. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there are separate violations, one for the licensee um, and then one for the clerk. So the clerk selling to an individual under 21 violates um, violates section 28 2802B of the code, which pertains to the same areas county. So there there are two different violations. So one we're doing the clerk right now. We're the, doing the business, the owner, and Ms. Sue is appearing for on behalf of both the licensee and as the clerk who sold. Okay. So are we going to need to make two separate motions then? We're going to do two different two different deals. We're going to have to go through the process and finish with the owner and the penalty phase, and then we will move into the employee phase. Right. Correct. That's that. That sounds fine with me. Like that. That's okay. what we've done in the past. Um, is if I can ask another question before we make a motion. Um, it, so I understand the licensee has completed RASP training as the... Um, the licensee has completed RASP, yes. And has Ms. Lynn uh, Zhu completed yes, RASP Zhu training as well? Yes, Ms. Zhu has taken in the past as well, yes. Do we know how long ago? Oh, not off the top of my head, I'm sorry. It's been a, while. It's been a few years, but... Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having them... Retake it. Retake as right. part of the as part of the penalty, and and that's what I'm struggling with. You know, is I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a serious violation. Um, you know, we can't we can't be having it. So, I, you know, this where I'm struggling is yes, there needs to be some some sort of penalty, but to what level? Um, I, you know, personally, I'd I'd like to to grant some leniency a little bit, right? But so that's that's. Where I'm struggling right now, why I haven't made the motion yet, because and there's also the response. There's also the respect to the the law enforcement who go out and do the job. Yes, and and you know, is a penalty sufficient to try to prevent it from happening again? Agreed. And, and it sets precedents for others. For others. Right. Yeah, uh, Mr. Beavers. Yes, sir. I'd I'd like you to remind the uh, the board what the what the penalties on this could be, um, so, that, so that everyone's aware of that, please? Sure. Uh, so there are various options. Um, the board has a right to revoke or suspend the license. They have a right to fine um, the licensee not to exceed $1,000. You can revoke or suspend and fine, which is both. Um, and then with regard to the employee, I'll just give you that, since I know we're not doing the employee right now, but for the employee, you can, um, you can assess a fine not to exceed $500. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. 
so um, so I go ahead I was about to make a motion but let me go right ahead I was say um, I guess I'd like to make a motion for uh, um, uh, given the violation of uh, 5.04 J, uh, the rules and regulations of Alcohol Beverage Board, St. Mary's County, uh, the A and B liquors uh, should be fined $500 uh, with $250 held in abeyance for three years, uh, pending no further, further violations. Uh, the fine should be payable in 10 days, um, uh, or the license will be suspended until paid. Okay, we have a motion, and that motion was to um, have a $500 fine, suspended $250 of it, um, payable within 10 days of the, um, of the uh, verdict. Actually, it start, day one actually starts tomorrow, Friday. Yes. Correct payable in 10 business days and the articles that were being violated were um, a violation of sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under age of 21 in violation of section 6304 of the alcoholic beverage article of the anti-coded code of Maryland and Five, section 5.04J of the rules and regulations of alcohol board of St. Mary's County. <clears throat> Mr. Beaver, you need a second. We need. Oh, yes, sir. Do we have a second? I will okay. second that. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Votes. It, uh, it was unanimous. Thank you. So next. Um, you're already sworn in, okay? I know. Okay. Next is for the employee, Lin Zhu. The above individual, Lin Zhu, was an employee of the license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under age of 21 years in violation of Section 28-2802B, the alcoholic beverage article of the Anacoded Code of Maryland. Um, Lin Zhu, um, do you agree that this took place or not? Yes? Okay. Then I get to speak. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beaver? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll recite the facts once again. On May 29, 2021, at 11.37 a.m., St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a sheriff's cadet, age 19, into A&B Liquors, located at 28260 Three Notch Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Once inside, the cadet approached the register area um, and requested two bottles of 50 milliliter bottles of fireball cinnamon whiskey from the clerk identified as Miss Lynn Zhu. Ms. Lin Zhu retrieved the requested alcoholic beverages and um, placed them on the counter and proceeded with the sale. Ms. Zhu failed to ask the cadet for identification of proof of age. Um, the cadet completed uh, the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the licensed premises um, with the alcoholic beverages. Um, and all these, all these um, occurred within St. Mary's County, Maryland. You can leave it at that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Members, do you have any questions? Okay, very good. Um, so um, next we'll move to the penalty phase. Um, do we have a motion? For, uh, for, well, first, let's go back and yes, um, we have it. We already have a guilty um, admission. So um, we'll go to go to the penalty phase now. I'm sorry. Do we have a motion? Yeah, I can. I'll make a motion. Um, uh, that uh, that Lin Zhu, uh, in violation of uh, uh, twenty eight dash twenty eight oh two B of the alcohol beverage article in the annotated code of Maryland, um, that uh, she be required to uh, take uh, remedial RASP training um, for familiarity with those sections. 
Okay. Do I need to, uh, Mr. Beaver, do I, do I need to put a timeline? I would imagine you would put does? a time frame, required time frame. I would say that they could, again, I don't want to be overly burdensome on their business with the owner out of country. So uh, let's say that needs to be completed within 60 days. You're talking the RAST? RAST. Or? RAST. Right now, we've just gone to pandemic two in the county. I'm not sure that would be possible. Okay. We do have a running list of those who are required to take. Okay. Um, whew. Is there other, any other remedial I believe training that Ms. We Zoo, we just got that she took a TIPS course again recently. Okay. Since this offense happened? Yes. Okay. Okay. The, the tips. Do you, does she have it? I may amend my motion, uh, Mr. Chairman. July 5th. So let me amend my motion, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, so I'll make a motion that uh, Len Zhu, in violation of uh, uh, Code 28, TAC 2802B of the Alcohol Beverage Article and of the Annotated Code of Maryland, um, in violation of that code for selling to an individual under 21 years of age, uh, complete the TIPS training, um, which has already been completed. And that would be the summation of that penalty, uh, citing no further issues. So we have a motion that Lin Zhu, uh, okay, based, okay, I move based on the facts presented and testimony heard that X, Y, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, that the um, Lin Zhu violated. Um, Section 282802 of the Alcoholic Beverage Board I mean, article and the Anticoda Code of Maryland by um, selling alcohol to a minor under 21 years of age. And that the penalty will be the already um, performed TIPS training. Um, do we have a, a second motion for that? I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a <clears throat> second discussion. I will start off discussion by saying that we haven't done too many of these situations where the um, employee was in the penalty box for the actual act. Normally it was just before it was the, the owner. But since we have been doing it, there's always been, I believe there's always been a cash penalty that's been levied against them. And so that's the precedence of the past of of how we've dealt with it. Now, against the employer, normally the employee, normally the employer would 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 and and both would. Yes. You know, there's been circumstances where we've been lenient where maybe this employee is only a week old, I mean a week there. And then you can say, well, the training wasn't insufficient or something. You know, then more responsibility should be put on on the employer than the employee. But in this case, she's been an employee for 10 years and she made a mistake, but um, I think there has to be some sort of cash penalty that should be um, associated with it instead of just tips trading. And Ken, the RASP be, is there a way that we could do RASP once it becomes available? Is there a method that you can contact? Bringing this up, I just wanted to, um, and Chris, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the statute 
gives the board the ability or the rules and regs for an employee to for the board to impose training on employee i think the only thing you have an option to do is fining right, right the fine not to exceed five hundred dollars it doesn't nope. it doesn't reference in the statute um a, a penalty of, of seeking or of, of advocating to go for training now there's nothing stopping an employer or an employee from, from, going from signing to up correct and that and her having done so is a is a it's a positive thing take a responsibility some reason i thought i remembered seeing that in our rules and regs but mr beaver is our expert and i'm sorry I, I didn't remember that till we started till you brought up yeah i like said so we haven't done very many employees in a while so my my hesitancy on 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 imposing a monetary penalty to Miss Lou is um, yeah I mean it was a mistake she admitted it um, hopefully just you know we find the employer um, hopefully her presence here is certainly disruptive enough to make her think twice um, and you know but given some extenuating circumstances with uh the owner being out of country everything that's happened with this pandemic causing financial strain on these businesses um I, i'm like i said i'm i i want to be firm consistent but also lenient when able um so uh, that's that's my hesitancy or reluctancy to um, to impose a financial penalty on the individual in this case. It wasn't necessarily a blatant first violation, at least in three years that we've talked about. Um, uh, again, I think probably sitting here in front of uh, in front of everybody here is in of itself probably a little bit of a penalty in of itself. So. So you're withdrawing the motion. I guess that's the question. So then I will draw withdraw my motion. If we are not able to do training, uh, then uh, which I apologize for some reason. I thought I read that was. One it's of not the, within. It's just not within the purview of the statute. No worries. No worries. My misunderstanding of, the, of our of our guidelines. Um, then uh, again, uh, I will I will withdraw that motion. Um, I'm trying to think of what the next motion would be. <laughs> how to do that, how to word that. Um, I, okay, the motion's withdrawn. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Cole, do you have a motion? Anybody else? Any more discussion? I, I agree. I agree with Mr. Watts in the fact that we've got two extenuating circumstances here. One of the fact that the owner is out of country. I'm, I'm suspecting that he can't get back in right now in, in regards to the pandemic. I don't know that for a fact, but uh, with the uh, pandemic uh, resurrecting its ugly head again, um, I think it's placed a strain on on all businesses um, and uh, so while while I do believe that there should be some sort of monetary restitution or fine here for the uh, for the actions I think it should be uh, minimal uh, of a minimal amount um, that's that's my thoughts on everything Barbara? Kind of agree with Mr. Watts. Okay. I think she's, I think they're being punished enough with the, I don't know whether you can put a restriction on it, like a time frame, if it would happen again or. Um, there is. There, 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 you could, I believe, sit there and suspend the entire fine 
for up to the three year period. And at that time, if another infraction happens, then they would get the full penalty, mm -hmm. plus the addition of whatever's given out the next time. Mm -hmm. I myself would, I, I don't believe that somebody comes before us and makes a mistake. Um, I believe there has to be some penalty. Mm -hmm. um, I said there's there's the there there needs to be something and and the, and the fact that RAS can't be given out or nothing else it has to be some sort of monetary. I think it should be something like a hundred dollars. I mean five hundred dollars, four hundred of it withheld um, for the you know and suspended for three years. Everybody makes mistakes, and that's the problem with this. When everybody's going to come before you, they've made a mistake. That's why they're here. They made a mistake. You make a mistake because there's you know there's distractions. There's you know there's there's poor staffing sometimes. You're tired. You know those are all those are all things that are factors can make people make a mistake. Yes, most people, I mean, pretty much everybody's going to come before us and say that I made a mistake. They're not going to tell you, yes, I know Bob was 8, 19 years old and I sold him a bottle of beer anyway. It's not, you know, it's just not going to happen. So I, I believe her. I believe she made a mistake. Uh, she was sick. And, and, and I think only finding a uh, Hundred. I mean, you know, the five hundred and holding back four hundred is is a um, is a com, you know compassionate move. But I think there has to be some sort of penalty that's delivered today. The other the other fact, uh, Mr. Chairman, is the fact that uh, that four hundred four hundred dollar fine would be reimposed within the three years if there was a violation. Right. As, as well as as well as uh, imposing a, a further fine for the the second violation the second if it ever happened. Yes. 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 Yeah. It's basically the same the, the same thing we did for the employer, right? With the five hundred and the two fifty in abeyance. Yes. So they basically pay the two fifty now or within ten days, and then the two they would pay an additional two fifty if there's another violation, mm -hmm. plus any new penalties on that. Yeah, it's a tough one, especially when we've got two other cases coming after this. <laughs> it's a tough one. So we're looking for a motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on, we have uh, somebody in the audience raise their hands. Uh, Mr. Myers? And I don't want to prolong the situation, um, but in her, her circumstance... Please come to the microphone. This, this. I'm Sergeant Myers with the Sheriff's Office. In her circumstance, a lot of things that she had uh, described to me of why she was affected by this uh, doesn't come out in my reports. You know, it's her thing. Um, it's, it seemed like it was like peer pressure in a sense because uh, whoever the other co workers were said that she checks too many IDs, that she's uh, not being efficient with progress. So, why are you checking? You know, older people's IDs. She used to, she, she described to me that she checked everybody. So I don't know if that was like a, a pressured kind of situation for her, but I know you're coming to a resolution of what what type of fine you should give, and it's not mandated that you tell her to go to RAS. But how much is it? How much is RAS? All right. So I mean. You're going to make a decision in reference to a monetary amount, but I just figured I'd throw that in there. We don't usually do that, but culturally, she wasn't getting how I was describing it to her of what she did. And then she described to me that other people would make fun of her for checking so many IDs. So I, that information would have been helpful in the first in the in the in the first hearing. Well. This is the hearing dealing with her specifically. Understand, but the cult, but but if that's the culture and the business, that would have been helpful for us. Indeed. Thank you. Nobody called mm -hmm. on me. I, I tried mm -hmm. to wave. Didn't call for you this time. Thank you though. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Guess who's getting called next time though? <laughs> yes. All right. I'll, I'm going to make a motion. Um, either we like it or we don't. <laughs> uh, so I'll make a motion based on the facts and, uh, presented in the uh, testimony heard that uh, um, 
Ms. Lynn Zhu, uh, having been in violation of 28 TAC 2802B of the Alcohol Beverage Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, uh, be fined $500. $450 being held in abeyance uh, for a period of three years pending no further violations. Uh, the fine will be payable within 10 days. Okay, thank you. Member Watts has made a motion um, to fine $500, 450 is gonna be suspended for three years. To, um, to Lynn Sue um, for selling uh, alcoholic beverages under the to someone under the age of 21 years of age in violation of 28-2802B of the Alcoholic Beverage Article of the Anticoded Code of Maryland. That would be payable within ten, um, ten days, um, which would be. Friday would be day one. Okay. Does someone second? Oh, yes. That motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, none, passes unanimously. Thank you. Good luck. Pardon me? Is it the second? Barbara. Barbara, Barbara Hill. Barbara. Thank you. Good luck, Miss Sue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lynn, you can call the office tomorrow and we'll explain to you how to how to pay your fine. Okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Aki. Thank you. Race N N. Licensee Robert Bradley Brizzy. Sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of Section 6-304 of the Alcoholic Beverage Article of the Anticoded Code of Maryland and Section 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's. Swear them in, please. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Do you please state your name and your home address for the record? Yes, sir. My name is Robert Bradley Brizzy. I reside at 40170 Beach Drive, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Thank you, sir. So, sir, um, do you agree that this uh, this this um, took place? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Would you uh, take it, Mr. Beaver? Mr. Chairman. Um, on May 29th, 2021, at 10.24 a.m., St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a Sheriff's Office cadet, age 19 years, um, into Race and Inn, located at 26755 Stone Corner Lane, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Once inside, the cadet approached the register area and requested two 50 milliliter bottles of Fireball cinnamon whiskey from the clerk, later identified as a Mr. Wesley McKinley III. Um, Mr. McKinley uh, retrieved the requested alcoholic beverages, placed them on the counter, and proceeded with the sale. Uh, Mr. McKinley failed to ask the cadet for any identification for proof of age. Uh, the cadet completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the licensed premises with the alcoholic beverages. The cadet uh, thereafter reported to Corporal John Kirkner, a member of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit, outside the licensed premises. 
where the cadet described the sale of the alcoholic beverages to Corporal Kirkner. Thereafter, Corporal Kirkner and Sergeant Myers, um, the St. Mary's County Alcohol Enforcement Officer, entered the licensed premises, identified themselves, and informed Mr. McKinley that he had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage sheriff's office cadet without asking for identification. Mr. McKinley expressed to the officer's regret for making the sale um, and could not provide an explanation for why he did not ask for identification. Uh, photographs of the alcoholic beverages were taken by members of the alcoholic um, enforcement unit. Then the beverages were poured out and the bottles disposed of. Um, the Alcoholic Beverage Board of St. Mary's County was notified of this in incident by the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. The Alcoholic Beverage Board of St. Mary's County issued summonses to the license holder, Mr. Robert Bradley Brizzy, and to the clerk, Mr. McKinley. All of the foregoing occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you. Members have any questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Brizzy, is uh, Mr. McKinley still in your employ? No, sir. No, sir? sir. He was fired after this incident? Uh, it was a contributing factor, not directly afterwards. It was no, a sir. conversation that we had in upper management. It is our policy for immediate termination in the day and age that we live in that the employees are super hard to come by. You know, we did make a, uh, you know, a determination that we were gonna try, try to ride it out. It was a contributing factor. Um, and per Mr. Willingborg's conversation earlier about making a mistake, sir, I have to tell you, I'm embarrassed to be here. You know, I've been in the alcohol business for 20 years, and this is super serious to me. My staff is here. My store is closed today, and they are here in attendance for this. So a mistake is you make a mistake. Not to check the ID, you didn't do your job. Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple, sir. So at the end of the day, you know, we're guilty. We shouldn't be here. And, you know, what to do moving forward. We put some things into place that needed to change. Is there a 100% solution? Mm, probably not. You know, could we make it better? Maybe if we had a mandatory 100% ID check in the whole state of Maryland for any age-restricted item. Takes that clerk out of the equation to make that call. I don't know what the answer is. You know, but once again, I don't want to be here. And nor do I want you guys to be here talking to me. Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate it. Do you have Do you have now um, as uh, standard operating procedures a uh, hundred uh, percent uh, ID verification on all sales? No, sir. No, sir. And that and I'll explain. That's a business decision, and that's why. Unfortunately, we have to rely on the clerk to make that decision. If they didn't have to make that decision and they had to require, you required to do that every single sale that you made. But if you, Mr. Cole, came into my store every day and I knew your name and I didn't check your ID one time, my 100% ID policy goes away right there. It holds no weight. So that's where, you know, the business decision becomes we are in a convenience business. We are in, you know, we see customers every single day, the same customer every day. Is it reasonable to check their ID every day? Once again, that's a, you know, that's a question that I can't answer, I guess. So, you know, in my mind, you know, it's not when they could go up the street and not be inconvenienced by something that, you know, we're seeing them every single day. So if there was, you know, there was no competitive advantage about it, sir, that's the answer. You know, everyone should have a 100% ID check. You know, without that, we have to make a decision, and then that clerk ultimately has to make a decision. Why did he make that decision that day? I don't know, sir. I can't answer that. Okay. Sounds like to me he should have, you know, from every description I got, that he should have been carded. No, nope, no, hands down. We didn't do our job. Anybody else? Um, just two questions. Any prior? No. Okay. Um, so uh, I like that flexibility and in, in the empowering of your, your employees. Uh, I think it's a good thing. Um, what sort of training do you give them for that to ensure that things of this nature aren't you know, missed, no, overlooked, and uh, and that the violations occur. Well, unfortunately, in this instance, sir, it doesn't appear to be this way. But in general, I've been in this alcohol business for almost 20 years. I am a proactive training guy. I believe that every single person that works in that store should be trained. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, he was not. You know, as we went through an upper management change, there's no excuse for it. You, you know, it's just part of getting time. You know, to do it in people's schedule, things of that nature. At the end of the day, I'm a proactive training guy, sir, not a reactive one, and I. I do my request is for everyone that works at that store to be trained. Okay. 
Is that a uh, an annual training, a monthly training, a one-time training when they're hired, new hire training? Cuts well, when they're hired, for sure. Right. Hire yeah, training. absolutely. And then I believe that it expires at, relative to the whatever certification it is, two years, three years. They all have their different expiration times. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, well, I guess we're rolling. Pardon me? Sure. Sergeant Myers, would you come forward? Take it if you want my two cents a little bit. Uh, just in reference to the store itself and the owner and uh, the managers in the back also, she made me aware of you know, different circumstances for that business. It's very busy. It's by the raceway. It's an international raceway, so therefore they have to check various types of IDs from various states, things of that nature. Even when we were there, it was somewhat busy because the races, COVID being lifted at that particular time, people were coming over. So a calculation of all things, you know, it, it's quite a busy place, and you're dealing with uh, a lot of inter uh not just Marylanders, but Virginia, Delaware, anywhere that would come over. And um, the main thing I wanted to say was the three previous times that we did uh, covert buys, they passed. So, so something's going right there. And just in this situation, it was a little off kilter. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Myers. Ms. Hildebrand, uh, what was the... Uh, uh, Training that we had on uh, identifying uh, fake IDs. That was part of the. That's part of the RAST training. That's part of RAST, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And Mr. Brizzy was one of the retailers at the time RAST was created, who supported that and also supported the mm -hmm. penalty phase that's in here, the matrix. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brizzy was um, Mr. Had Mr. McKinley attended RAST. He had training. not. He had he, not been trained. He yet. had not. He had not been trained, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Tammy, when's the last time we had a RAS training? February before COVID. Right. Yeah. February so there, twenty. There's nothing. It's not available. Yeah. It's unavailable now until we're out of this this whole pandemic. Well, correct. Yeah, we've come to some conclusions that we're going to have to do this online for some people. We just we got to. I mean, I, we can't play yo-yo like this. Given given the situation with the pandemic and not knowing when that is going to uh, be uh, lifted, the restrictions and everything else, uh, this would then be another um, um, something I would suggest. For the board, perhaps, that uh, once it is reinitiated, that we uh, involve all the businesses in into a recertification of RAST. I don't know if that would be appropriate or not. I would think that I you know don't know if you if there's authority to do that. Yeah, I don't know. Is that something you could check on for the us? The only please? law that we have for RAST, and it is in. Um, the annotated code is that the licensees, when they apply, they mu the licensee must be trained, RAS trained. It doesn't say anything about about the employees, correct? Nothing about employees and nothing about recertification. I, I think I find that pretty self-defeating in the fact that the people that check the IDs are the ones that would see or or would be. Um, well, most of the businesses, because RAS training is free, and we've tried to keep it free, and we continue to try and keep correct. it free, uh, most businesses have used it, uh, you know, when, when they go to the state training, TIPS, TAM, SurfSafe, um, mm -hmm. it, you have to register for that, it costs money, mm -hmm. and it's hard to do it right away, so... Uh, we had a monthly RAS training, and most, a lot of our businesses use that as part of their training for their employees. Their employees are welcome to come. Currently, we do have a, a long list of people who are required to take it, either by violation okay. or application. But, <clears throat> like I said, during my time, I'll discuss um, our plans on trying to do this virtually. Okay. Okay. Mr. Brizzy, how many employees do you have? Uh, it varies, sir. Six, eight, six or eight at any six given or eight time. At any, yes, sir. It varies. At any one particular time, correct? Yes, sir. 
Mm -hmm. And you have initiated then now a, a yearly training program or uh, two year, every two years or... I mean, it's more of an immediate basis as far as when they get hired. You know, once again, the people that are there are either trained already or in the process of getting trained. Sometimes the training is difficult when you have part-time people that have regular jobs, you know, and the training's only available at some points in time, this, that. It's, you know, once again, sometimes it's difficult for logistic purposes, you know, but once again, yes, sir, my objective is for everyone to mm -hmm. be trained. You know, I would also, I guess, as we're talking about training, and whether it's my case or it's the case before mine, the case that's coming up next, I'm not sure about. But my case and the case before, neither clerk checked the ID. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a problem. It's not an understanding. Is the training is the training is, is, is does training fix that problem? You, you know, you know about making that decision of whether you check that ID or not. And once again, I'm a pro training person, and I agree that it's super important. But does that fix the, the common problem that I don't know what the third case is like that? But that's common problem. You know, it's a common problem with myself in the case before. Right. Yeah, but certainly you wouldn't put a clerk behind the uh, behind the counter there that did not know how to how to use the register. Correct. That's correct. Okay. And they would they would benefit from some kind of training on how to use the register, correct? Agreed. Okay. That's my point. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, so we we don't we can go go to the penalty phase now because yep. we've already have a mission of guilt. Yes. Um, go ahead, sir. Um, so I'll, I'll preface this motion with the. In fact, it's Sergeant Meyer's testimony of you know several other passing by uh, you know uh, passing enforcement checks. Um, I believe Mr. Brizzy said he had all of his employees here. Um, he's taken uh, some some action with the employee is no longer employed, um, and uh, and his training program. Uh, so basically, I'm going to make a motion based on uh, those facts and other facts that have been presented, uh, the testimony that we've heard. Uh, that race and in uh, is uh, basically in violation of uh, section 6-304 uh, of the Alcohol Beverage Articles and Annotations Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County uh, and should be fined $500 with $400 held in abeyance for three years pending no further violations. Uh, the fine is to be payable within 10 days, uh, or the licensee will be suspended until paid. So, Member Watts has made a motion to, um, with after Mr. Um, Brizzy's uh, admission that alcohol was sold to um, an under under someone under the age of 21 in violation of S Section 6-304 of the Alcohol Beverage Article of the Anticoded Code of Maryland and Section 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Um, he's motioned to um, fine $500, suspending $400 for a term of three years. And... Uh, that would be payable within 10 days. Do we have a second of that motion? I'll second that motion. We have a second. Okay, discussion. Well, I will start discussion. Um, we just sit there and find somebody who was out of country, $250, $500, 250 held for three years, suspended for three years. For, for an error, and now we're having a discussion of giving Ms. Brizzy a, a, a linear fine for, yes, an error that was made in his store. Actually, you know, I think he's kind of like told us it was a flat out negligence. It's not training, it's somebody just re didn't do their job. Yep. So, um, and Mr. Chairman, if I can explain, uh, to, I knew that would come up because, again, I, I want to ensure that we're, we're consistent in our application of, uh, of our penalties. Um, however, uh, this testimony, I believe, in my opinion, was different in that Mr. Brizzy had, has taken some, uh, some actions. Uh, he's had 
you know, again, that's why I pointed out specifically the things that he's done. Uh, I think, uh, you know, warrant some leniency um, and having passed previous enforcement things. Um, uh, and I think he's on the right track. In fact, he's got the fact that he's got his entire store here today because he knew, hey, guys, we screwed up. We're all going to this and we're going to sit through this. So to me, that says a lot about how he runs his business. And I think he's doing the right things to try to, to, to ensure that this sort of thing doesn't continue to occur. Um, so to me, that is certainly the difference in those two, two cases. Um, and uh, so, so that, that's where I'm coming from and why um, I made the motion for a slightly different penalty phase than I did the previous. So just to explain my rationale. Mr. Cole. You have all of your employees are here today, Mr. Brizzy? Yes, sir. My store is closed. And your, and your store my is store, closed, Yes, correct? sir. My store is closed, and all of my employees are sitting in the audience today. Okay, So they understand the seriousness of what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So what, restate your motion one last time for me, please. The entire one? <laughs> I'm not sure I can remember it all. <laughs> All right. But so, Mr. Beaver, you want to say, I think the motion is on the record. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to have to have them restate it because it may not be consistent with the first okay. time we said it. So. Okay. Yeah. So, and I did, I tried to preface the motion. Perhaps I should have incorporated the motion, but uh, um, I knew that would be at least, uh, it is recorded that the, the, again, based on facts presented in the testimony that was given, right? And, and there was still those three four key specific things are, are uh, what drove uh, my motion for the penalty to be what it was. And I'll restate those for the record for That's everyone to know. So those three things were um, previous enforcement checks, the three previous enforcement checks that I believe that Sergeant Myers um, stated uh, had passed. Um, the employee who uh, created the violation is no longer in the employ of, of the uh, store. Um, and the uh, training, the persistent training that he has in place for his employees to ensure that they're at least aware of this sort of thing that needs to happen. Uh, and the fourth thing that, uh, you know, it's obvious that Mr. Brizzy takes this seriously enough that he uh, closed his store today uh, and brought his entire staff here to be present to understand the severity of what they're going through. So, so to me, it's this store clearly takes this seriously. Um, and so again, I, they, they messed up, they made a mistake. We're gonna find them, they need to be fined. But uh, I think it can be a little bit more, um, you know, relaxed. Now again, there's still the $500. So if it happens again within three years, they're gonna get it with that. Um, so but it's a hundred dollars now. Hundred dollars now, and suspended. Four hundred is is suspended. But yeah, if it happens again in three years, that five hundred dollars is going to hit. And then certainly, if I'm still on the board and it comes before me again, <laughs> I, I, I will certainly take a different different stance. I think right, but uh, no no previous violations. Um, so so yes, my my recommendation for the penalty was different. Uh, but again, I think it's a different situation that necessitated a, a different penalty phase. Okay. Any more discussion? That makes sense, Mr. Beaver. Yes, sir. No more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Me? Okay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brizzy. Good luck. Okay, next, the employee, Wesley Cray McKinley III. <clears throat> Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please have a seat, Mr. McKinley. So we need you to state your um, your home or record. Name and address, please. Pardon me, sir? His name and address. Yes, name and address. 
Uh, first name is McKinley, middle name is Wesley, last name is Cree, and that's the third. Address is 7833 Bethany Lane, we're played in Maryland, 20646. So we, got, we have the name down here wrong? That's correct. So, so your first name's what again, sir? First name is McKinley. McKinley. And so it's McKinley Cray Wesley? Wesley. No. Wesley Cray. No. Okay. My apologies, sir. Okay. Uh, it's not spelled right either. Could you, could you spell that for us, sir? K-R-I-E-G-H. Thank you. Thank you for the corrections. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's McKinley Wesley Cray, sir? Yes. Yeah, Thank Wesley you. Cray, the third. And the third? The Is third. that correct? The third. Okay. Third, yes. And your, and, uh, your address was the, what again? Your home address? 7833 Bethany Lane. Okay, thank you, sir. Got that? Okay. The above individual, McKinley Wesley Cray III, was an employee of a, a license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of Section 28-2802B of the Al Alcoholic Beverage Article of the Anacoded Code of Maryland. How do you plead, sir? Guilty. Guilty. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I may. So on October, I'm sorry, I apologize, on May 29th, 2021 at 1024 in the morning, St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent the Sheriff's Office, office Cadet, age 19, into Raisin Inn, located at 26755 Stone Corner Lane in Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Once inside, the cadet approached the register area and requested two 50 milliliter bottles of fireball cinnamon whiskey from the clerk later identified as Mr. McKinley Cray III. Mr. Cray retrieved the requested alcoholic beverages, placed them on the counter and proceeded with the sale. Uh, Mr. Cray failed to ask the cadet for any identification of proof of age. The cadet completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the licensed premise. Um, with the alcoholic beverages. The cadet thereafter reported to Mr. Uh, to Corporal John Kirkner, a member of the alcohol enforcement unit outside the licensed premise, um, where he described the sale of the alcoholic beverages to Corporal Kirkner. Corporal Kirkner and Sergeant Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Bureau um, entered the licensed premise, identified themselves, and informed Mr. Cray that he had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage sheriff cadet without asking for any identification. Mr. Cray expressed to the officer's regret for making the sale uh, and could not provide an explanation for why he did not ask for identification. Photographs were taken of the beverages that were sold, um, which were then poured out and disposed of. Uh, the incident was reported by the Sheriff's Office to the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, um, which then has issued summons to Mr. Brizzy, the um, licensee, and to the clerk, Mr. Cray. And the, all the foregoing has happened in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Okay, thank you. Members, do you have any questions? Mr. McCray, how, how long had you been employed with uh, Racing In? Uh, yeah, when this occurred? Up to that point, only a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Okay. Have you worked in other retails that have sold alcohol before? Years as an auto tech. As an auto tech? As an auto tech. Okay. Um, Can, can I? Um, I'd like to hear your kind of thoughts on 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 what happened and, and why you you failed to to check a basic ID. It's just uh, didn't not familiar with working the cash register and taking IDs, checking IDs on a regular basis. I'd never done that before, so it was just a lack of judgment, I think, at yeah. that point. You've per you've pro I assume you've purchased alcohol in the state of Maryland before, yes? I have. Yes. Oh, of course. Yes, and I assume Not you recently. had to present. I assume you had to present an ID when you purchased alcohol. Not normally. In back in the early days, I never showed any ID at all. 
Right. So, so I guess to that end, when was the last time that you purchased alcohol that you had to pay, that you had to present an ID to someone? Probably eight or ten years ago, if okay. not more. Okay. Um, okay. Barbara, questions? Were you instructed as far as running the register, the policy of checking IDs? Yes, I was told to check IDs. So did you? <laughs> Obviously not. And not that particular person, no, but right. had no, you been? No, I did many other, mm -hmm. sure. So was there a reason you didn't check this particular one? I can't put a finger on it. Okay. I could go at that time. Just one of those days you just let it slide, huh? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Okay. In your words. Sergeant Myers, uh, I apologize if I missed it in uh, Mr. Beer's testimony. When you, after the incident occurred, and then your enforcement officers go in and talk to the students, you also talk to the employee as well? I did. Um, what, would you mind describing that interaction and, and what came of that? Um, I, I entered from the uh, front with uh, Corporal Kirkner. Um, after the cadet described who uh, had um, sold him the alcohol, I approached, uh, we identified ourselves, explained the situation that we sent a, a cadet in that was 19 years of age and he did not, he failed to uh, ask for an identification. He was uh, sorry for his actions. Uh, he said that he wasn't too familiar with exactly what he just described. And I said, you always have to check. I mean, he has a youthful face. He's 19 years of age. He's a cadet. Um, you know, it's, it's a determination of, you know, he's not going to present it himself. And if, if all he had to do was ask him because I sent him in without any identification. So as soon as they ask for ID, they said, well, I don't have it with me. And then they exit and that's end of the transaction. So, okay. But he was very sorry for his actions and, um, you know, after talking with him, I spoke to the manager and, you know, she she kind of described what goes on there, that they are trained and that they uh, expect everyone to uh, be ID that has a youthful face. Okay. So I understood. I empathized with him, but he, he failed to uh, ask. Okay, great. Thank you, Sergeant Myers. Uh, Mr. Cray, are you currently employed? No. Okay. I have no further questions. Mr. Cole? Mr. Chairman. Mm, no. <clears throat> okay. So we will move into the penalty phase. So. Uh, I can make a motion. Go ahead. <laughs> Why am I getting all these today? <laughs> um. So I'm going to, based on the uh, facts presented, uh, the testimony that we heard, um, make a motion that uh, um, Mr. Cray, uh, Mr. McK uh, McKinley Westland McCray, uh, was in violation of 28 TAC 2802B for the sale of uh, someone under the age of 21, violation of the alcohol beverage article of the annotated uh, code of Maryland and that it should be fined $50 to be payable in 10 days. And that should be consistent with somewhat consistent. I didn't hold the fifty dollars in abeyance. Second. Discussion. Oh, well, actually, um, motion. Second. Do we have a second. To um, let me read it first. The motion is to find fifty dollars. Period. Nothing. Nothing suspended. Fifty dollars. Um, to McKinsey Wesley. 
McRae III for selling alcohol to someone under 21 years of age um, in violation of uh, our, I mean, Section 28, 2802B, the alcoholic article, Vanicoded um, Code of Maryland. We have a second. Mr. Just, Chairman, before we second, may I amend my motion? Go ahead, amend your motion. Uh, I think I would like to make it to be, again, completely consistent. $100 or $50 to be paid within 10 days, $50 held. So it's uh, Mr. Watts. It's a hundred dollar, a uh, hundred dollar fine. Hundred dollar fine. And fifty suspended, um, so that it does not recur within three years. Is that correct? Actually, not. What did I do the last one for? I apologize. It was five hundred with for, for the previous. It was five hundred four fifty suspended or in held in abeyance. Correct? Yes. I'm sorry. Penalty would be five hundred dollars, four hundred fifty held in uh, abeyance for three years, fifty to be paid now in ten days. My apologies, Mr. Chairman. It's fine. Ahead. So, based on the facts presented in the testimony heard, that Mr. McKinley Wesley Cray be fined. Five hundred dollars, but four hundred and fifty suspended for three years. For that fifty dollars, be payable within ten days, which would be starting tomorrow, ten business days. For violating section um, twenty-eight twenty um, twenty-eight two eight zero two B of the alcoholic beverage article of the anticoded um, of the anticoded code of Maryland. Yes. You, you need a second on the amended motion. Yes. Do we have a second? I'll make second that. We have a second. Okay, now discussion. If Mr. Cray was to go and 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 uh, uh, be employed by a different liquor store within the next three years and violated there, then that that violation is still carried forward, correct? Yes. Yes. Plus plus any additional right. that we would impose, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. That was why I amended my motion. Yeah. Thinking through that. Yeah. Any more discussion? Well, I, again, I, I think the um, the fine's a little on the lean side. He's so, also unemployed. So anyway, mm -hmm. all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cry, call my office tomorrow. I'll explain how to make payment. Same with Brad, wherever you are, Brad. There you are. <laughs> okay, thanks. Next, early bird. Licensee is uh, Raj Winder um, Core. Hopefully, I got that halfway right. Um, would you please uh, swear him in? Yes. Never Cole. Thank you. Uh, do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give? will be the truth and nothing but the truth. Please have a seat and state your name and home address for the record, please. Raj Vinder, call. 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव जीरो कैना कोड कैलिफोर्निया मेरीलैंड टू जीरो सिक्स वन नाइन थैंक यू सो यू हेयर डे बिकॉज यू बिन accused of um the sale of alcoholic beverage actually your business has been accused of selling sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of section 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the anacoded code of Maryland and section 5.04J of the rules and regulations of the alcohol beverage board for St. Mary's County um how do you plea yes Okay, guilty. Thank you, um, Mr. Beaver. Yes, Mr. Chairman. On May twenty ninth, two thousand twenty one, at nine o'clock a.m., St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a sheriff's office cadet, nineteen years of age, into the Early Bird located at two three seven nine one Merval Dean Road in Hollywood, Maryland, two zero six three six. Once inside, the cadet approached the register area and requested two 50-milliliter bottles of Fireball cinnamon whiskey from the clerk, later identified as Mr. Ajit Singh. Mr. Singh retrieved the requested alcoholic beverages, placed them on the counter, and proceeded with the sale. Mr. Singh failed to ask the cadet for any identification for proof of age. Uh, the cadet completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the premises with the alcoholic beverages. The cadet thereafter reported to Corporal John Kirkner, a member of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit outside the licensed premises, uh, and described the sale of the alcoholic beverages to Corporal Kirkner. Thereafter, Corpor Corporal Kirkner and Sergeant Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit entered the licensed premises, identified themselves, and informed Mr. Singh that he had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage sheriff's office cadet without asking for identification. Uh, Mr. Singh expressed to the officers remorse for, for making the sale, um, but could not provide an explanation for why um, he did not ask for identification. Photographs were then taken of the alcoholic beverages um, by the alcohol enforcement unit. The beverages were poured out and the bottles disposed of. The Alcoholic Beverage Board of St. Mary's County was notified of this incident by the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. The Alcoholic Beverage Board of St. Mary's County issued summonses um, to the license holder, Miss um, Rajwinder Kerr, and the clerk, Mr. Ajit Singh, and all of the foregoing occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Okay, thank you. Mr. Myers, yes, sir. Sergeant Raj Myers, sorry. And, uh, this situation was a little different, being that uh, the technique with the cadet going in and doing his thing was normal. But while he was waiting in line, um, one of the patrons of the establishment kind of informed the clerk prior to the uh, cadet getting up there, you better check his ID, you better check his ID. And that's what the cadet told me coming out, that somebody, he thought it was a person that worked there. Um, so you have a patron that's inside, said you better check his ID. And uh, he says, no, I know him, he's all right, he's all right. So he just kind of, you know, uh, allowed it to go to the wayside with the suggestion uh, because he thought he knew him. Um, other than that, there was nothing out of the ordinary. It was just that uh, he was kind of advised of check ID, and he failed to do so because he thought he knew him. Okay. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sergeant mm -hmm. Mars. Yeah, he, and made, he was sorry for his actions. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. He uh, made a mistake, and he's sorry. And we always check everybody's ID. We've been there in last 15 years. We didn't have a ticket from last 15 years. He's Yes. Last 15 years, we didn't have the, any, you know, violation. And my husband is a G-Sync. He's my employee, too, so he made a mistake. Because we check regularly base everybody's ID. So he made a mistake. He thought he's like, you know, he'd be checking same time, and people always, you know, joke around. You keep checking my ID. So that's how he made a mistake. Yes, ma'am. So been very aware of it everybody checking id so so we have so many green tickets too yes ma'am i'm sorry yeah. i just Sorry, had one Morris. last thing uh also with them uh the last three compliance checks that we did covertly uh they've passed and this is the time that they did not yeah thank you thank you questions
Ms. Ms. Kerr, is, um, again, similar questions as before. Any any prior violations? No. No, in the past three years. Um, and is Mr. Singh still employed with the? Yes, he's my husband. He's your husband. Yeah. Okay, that could make make for awkward dinner conversation. Sorry. Um, both are sorry. So. Um, okay, uh, and has he been? I guess as an employer of him and his employee, has he been reprimanded by the the I'm sorry? the company? Is he co? Is he co-owner? Yes, he's co earlier he's co-owner. Okay. 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 I have no further questions. Uh, you have any other questions? No, I have no further questions. Barbara? No questions. Well, yeah, I, I, I just want to point out that the fact that Mr. Singh is a co-owner to this. I'm sorry, I don't have that on record. No, um, go on. Uh, he's I'm sorry? I don't have Mr. Singh as a co-owner so on record. Co-owner? He's not? Not a hey, Only Mr. Yeah. Okay, only as a clerk. Okay. Okay. This is Mr. Singh. Uh, we need. Well, we need wait, 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 wait. He's got to be sworn. Wait. If you're going to say something, come forward. I need to swear you in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Please have a seat, speak into the microphone, state your name and your home address, please. Sure. <laughs> My name is Ajit Singh, and I live at uh, 23450 Kenna Court, California, Maryland, 20619. Okay. Okay, so we both own the business, but she's a licensee. Uh, the property is owned by both of us. The, the property limited. itself is owned by the company, correct? There are two corporations. One is the property the, uh, corporation, and then the other is the business corporation. Business corporation, Satyam LLC. That is what I, the, the property corporation is what I have Mr. Singh signing as landlord. I don't have him in the business paperwork. As, as, as business owners, owner. correct? Property it's owner, yes. Business the two, owner. The two, it's two separate entities. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I was the one who made that mistake. But, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a 67 years old. I work seven days a week. And... 100 time, we have like green cards from those coalition, like citizen coalition, the people who send people in to check whether we check the ID or not, and we had like six or seven green cards from them. Mm -hmm. So by that day, there was a friend of mine who was standing right next to me. He told me, can you check his ID? And I mistook him for somebody else who is 27 years of age, and he comes very frequently to my store. So I thought he was the same guy, and I even asked him, are you the, do I know you? He, he nodded. And then uh, I assumed it was the same guy, so that's why I didn't ask for the ID. And I made that mistake in in rare moment, but that, that, was a, that was a lapse of judgment on my part. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So right now we're in a phase for the business, the owner, okay? Not Mr. Ajit Singh, this is about the business. So, motion, do we have a motion for a penalty phase? We're moving to penalty phase, we, we've already got a, an admission that the act did take place. I'll make a motion uh, based on the facts presented, the testimony I heard uh, that Early Bird uh, liquor store is in violation for the uh, sale of persons under 21, violation of 6-304 of the Alcohol Beverage Article and Annotated Code of Maryland, and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. and should be fined five hundred dollars 
with $250 held in abeyance for three years pending no further violations. Uh, the fines payable in 10 days with licensees license will be suspended until paid. Okay. We have a motion um, to fine $500.250 suspended for three years for the sale of alcoholic beverages to, um, um, to the early bird, uh, Raj Winder Car Core for this um, for um, violation of Article actually of Section Six Dash Three Hundred Four the Alcoholic Beverage Article of the Anacoded Code of Maryland and for Five Point Zero Four J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St Mary's County. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, uh, Member Hill seconds it. Discussion? No discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimously passes. So you have 10 days as starting tomorrow, and that's 10 business days to, to pay the fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You can sit down. Thank you. Do I need to you can up? you can sit in the hot seat, sir. Thank you. Excuse, you've already been sworn in. <laughs> Thank you. So, Ajit Singh, the above individual, was an employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under the age of 21 in violation of section 28-2802-B I mean of the Alcoholic Beverage Article of the Anacoded Code of Maryland. Sir, um, you've, yes. do you admit to this? Yes? Okay, thank you. Mr. Beaver? Mr. Chairman. On May 29th, 2021, at 9 a.m., St. Mary's County Off uh, Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a Sheriff's Office cadet 19 years of age into the Early Bird located at 23791 Merville Dean Road in Hollywood, Maryland, 20636. Once inside, the cadet approached the register area and requested two 50 milliliter bottles of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey from the clerk, later identified as Mr. Ajit Singh. Mr. Singh uh, retrieved the requested alcoholic beverages, placed them on the counter, and proceeded with the sale. Mr. Singh failed to ask the cadet for any identification for proof of age. The cadet completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the licensed premise with the alcoholic beverages. The cadet thereafter reported to Corporal John Kirkner, a member of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit outside the licensed premises, where he described the sale of the beverages to Corporal Kirkner. Thereafter, Corporal Kirkner and Sergeant Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit entered the licensed premises, identified themselves, and informed Mr. Singh that he had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage sheriff's office cadet without asking for any identification. Mr. Singh expressed to the officer's remorse for making the sale, but could not provide an explanation um, for why he did not ask for identification. Photographs were taken of the beverages purchased and the bottles poured out and disposed of um, the alcoholic the Alcoholic Beverage Board of St. Mary's County was notified of the incident by the Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Alcohol and Beverage Board of St. Mary's County issued summonses for the licensee and Mr. Ajit Singh. Um, this all occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. You're welcome. Um, Sergeant Myers, do you want to add anything? No, sir. Other than what I said earlier, that was the only uh, kind of out of place situation was. Please come to my microphone. <clears throat> that was the only situation where uh, you have a patron actually saying something and uh, you know I guess he mistaken identity whatever the case may be but uh, it's only kind of fooling yourself if especially you got the individual right in front of you he's got a youthful face and he does have a youthful face so regardless of that uh, I have nothing to add okay thank you when uh, Sergeant Myers when was this when did this patron uh, um, tell you about uh, patron, what what he had said? 
the patron himself did not tell me when the cadet exited the store after the purchase he informed corporal kirkner and i that uh, he said i i don't know if he was an employee or what but he when i was buying the item he said yelled out to him hey check his id check his id so he said no nah, he's okay i know him and that's it that's the only okay. unusual situation mr singh did this yeah. incident occur i can i can explain like what happened uh, the patron he was telling he's a friend of mine he was standing right next to me when i was doing this transaction he asked me uh check id and when i looked at his face his face seemed familiar to me there's a guy who looked exactly like him he comes to my store almost like every day he's 27 years of age looks like 18 or 19 and i've checked his id like at least 20 30 times so i thought mistook him for that guy he looks similar the same exact age and same exact face so that's what i made a mistake mm -hmm. uh asking for the i i asked him even do i know you and he kind of nodded so uh, i kind of fell into that thing so i made that mistake at that point of time so that's how it happened otherwise i'm very particular about asking ids and i am the one who is running the store giving instruction to my employees we, we it's a family owned business so i'm the one who is making sure that everybody checking id but i made that mistake that day mm -hmm. unfortunately and i'm 67 years of age and i work seven days every day without any break unless i go out of town and i have two medical students as my kids my son is in fourth year medical and my daughter just got into medical school. I'm working hard for them, and I made a mistake, and I'm very sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No questions. Okay, thank you. Anybody want? Okay, so we'll move to the penalty phase. Do we have a motion for a penalty? Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion, uh, I guess, based on the facts presented, testimony heard, uh, that Mr. Singh uh, be in violation of uh, 28 TAC 2802B of the Alcohol Beverage Articles and of the Annotated Code of Maryland, uh, in violation for selling to someone under 21, be fined $500 with... $200 being held in abeyance for a period of three years. Fine, the penalty should be paid in 10 days. Okay. So we have a motion um, for Ajit Singh, um, who um, was admitted to having sold to a minor 21 years of age in violation of uh, section 28-2802B of the alcoholic beverage article of the anti-coded code of Maryland. So we have a motion for $500 uh, with, 200, with um, $200 being suspended for three years. And that would have to be payable within 10 days. Um, do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a second from Member Cole. Discussion. So in the discussion, I'll just add um, the reason for the harsher penalty, in my opinion, is, I mean, you, you had somebody telling you, hey, man, you got to check this guy's ID. I understand that. I mean, I understand maybe you mis misidentified him, but if it's somebody that you said you see, every day or several times a week um i mean it's i would think you'd be a little more familiar with with that particular person if if you were seeing them at that frequency um you know again in this case you yeah, somebody I'm, was right there and basically said you should check his id if somebody says you check his id i mean that the, at that point it just becomes it, it's it's not a mistake at that point at that point it's just negligence um, I learned my lesson ever since I've been checking ID, and the people who ask, I mean, tell me that 
you are guarded me yesterday and I apologize, but look, I'm not that young, I'm not that sharp like you are. I have to be safe. I, have to, I learned that lesson from that mistake. Right. No, I understand. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this penalty will uh, have you make sure you're, you're checking IDs again, particularly if, if someone's advising you to do so. Thank you. I will. So, it's the end of my comments for discussion. So. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, discussion? Only that that's why it's called punishment. Barbara? Any questions? <clears throat> um, okay. Um, with that, I guess we take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank uh, you very much. The fine has to be paid within 10 days starting tomorrow is the first day for 10 business days. Understand, sir? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Could you just come by the office? Call me tomorrow at the office and I'll let you know. Okay. And just as a note, Mr. Chairman, anyone wishing to appeal the board's decision has 30 days to do so with the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're going to go to the premise changes now. The first is Rex, the Rex, Joseph Curley, Charles Breck, and Daniel Norris. Uh, request the additional permanent outdoor seating expanding to five parking spaces. Please come forward. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I would I would wonder if we shouldn't make uh, no, not yet. This not yet. No, it's 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 in the record. It's in it's, the record. It's given to us. What's that from sir? from Ms. McKay? Oh yeah, no, that's part. It's in of, the record. That's yes. actually the okay. of zoning. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You'd have to ask the chair. If I could come up and give a little background for the four cases that are coming up. Um, then you guys can sit down, and um, we're going to we're not doing this as a lump group. As this is, Wait, they're all the same license. Do you? I, I guess what I'm saying, are you representing them today, or are you representing them? The next four cases, I thought if I gave you a little bit of groundwork, it might help. So you're going to speak for the town of Leonard Town? Yes. Okay, then then everybody, we'll, we'll take you first. Okay. Okay. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please have a seat and state your name and home address for the record. Lachelle McKay, 43020 Woodpecker Lane, Hollywood, Maryland. I just thought because we have uh, four cases on the agenda today that it might help to give a little bit of background. Um, the outdoor seating in Leonardtown is actually part of a larger uh, plan. We did a downtown strategic plan that we adopted in 2019, even prior to COVID, and the recommendation from that was outdoor seating. I think COVID just kind of sped up that process a little bit. Um, we've also been working very hard uh, in other aspects of the downtown plan, and it, part of that really um, is a significant investment in showing where the parking is available and um, how you get to it. We just approved a wayfinding signage bid that will help people find the parking. We do have plenty of parkings, just some people aren't as familiar with it. We're also working on a project in um, by our largest public parking lot called L-Town Alley, which will make it a very vibrant, nice place for people to park and to walk toward the downtown. That's over a $500,000 investment. We 
also passed a ordinance requiring that any outdoor seating must be approved by the, by the town council first. And then we just this week adopted uh, standard guidelines for outdoor seating to make it um, make sure that they're, it's safe and it's attractive. We also um, purchased uniform barricades for all the restaurants to use. They're nice, heavy concrete um, planters. And um, we've been operating this outdoor seating for over a year. We've had no issues. It's been extremely popular. It has been a lifesaver for our businesses during mm -hmm. COVID. And now people have just come to expect it. So we do want to continue it. And we support all the businesses to continue that. And we have submitted a letter uh, with each of them. And I'll be here if you have questions th throughout the process. Uh, Ms. McKay, um, the, uh, the, what, what, what the town of Leonardtown has imposed now as far as the restriction of uh, and expansion of the outdoor seating, will this um, eventually restrict traffic flow around the square itself to one lane? For the most part, it is one lane around the square already. There's the parking space. Oh, that's space. true. Yeah, right, right. Okay. We've made some um, changes in some of the inter intersections, not mm -hmm. uh, necessarily where the seating is at. The only one would be the one by Sweet Bay, which we've made a one-way street, which right, gave right. us the ability to add some parking back in front of P PNC Bank mm -hmm. and make it safer for pedestrians as a whole, not just for people sitting there, but people crossing the street and such. Okay. So we've we've continued and we're doing a lot of new signage um, with the wayfinding signage. It will help people get along, around a lot easier. Okay. It'll, it'll get rid of the sign clutter uh, and help people just when they're driving better mm -hmm. as well. Now Fenwick Street remains uh, two way. Mm -hmm. two, two different directions, correct? Yes. Just um, uh, Washington Street, um, anything around the square itself is restricted to one-way flow of traffic, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sergeant Myers, yes, sir? Well, you're speaking on the subject matter yeah. of uh, Don't the talk square. yet. Don't talk yet. You got to record the, the voice <laughs> from above. I like her telling me what to do. Miss <laughs> um, Hildebrand had uh, uh, advised that the board might want to know um, if there was any like traffic accidents, complaints, disturbances, or any of that within the, the town square area. So I ran a computer automated dispatch and uh, it only came back with four for a whole year's time frame. And out of those four, there was only two minor uh, car accidents, fender bender kind of thing, and two illegally parked cars that weren't even in the square area and nor was the uh, accidents. It was over by the, mm -hmm. well, the flower shop. It was a back. But um, other than that, you know, with the way that it, all the businesses have it set up, um, you know, I think everybody's getting used to it. So they're paying attention to things. And so I don't think you would have any future problems with as far as traffic type scenarios. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I guess I do have one question. Mm -hmm. It's the event that happened in October where a car ran into a bunch of um, barrels um, on Fenwick Street. There was a hit and run. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why nobody seems to know about this and wants to speak of it, but there has been an incident where, a, where patrons were out front mm -hmm. and there was a car accident, correct? There was. Um, no one was injured, but um, there was a hit and run of the barrels that were being used as barricades. We have since added a concrete barricade um, at the lower portion as people cars are coming up the hill where that incident happened. We also um, have a bump out um, plan there for more uh, permanent um, outdoor seating, and there would also be um, bollards that go into the flower, the planters that we have that will make it even more secure as people come up the hill. We've also added additional sign warning signs as you're coming up Fenwick Street that there there is um, pedestrians and that it is coming into a more mm -hmm. uh, congested area. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Question. Um, so I, I'm 
as we're kind of looking at some of these holistically, I know we're going to do these each individually, but when I look at the holistic picture, how do we, I mean, how do we, how do we prevent this from just turning into a big block party every weekend? Right. I mean, that, that's, there's, there's really nothing that, you know, when, when I look at particularly like, uh, um, you know, Sweet Bay and Antoinette's that are right next to each other and then Rex is right across the street. I mean, I, I love the concept. It's, it's a cool idea, but, but how, do we, how do we manage that from an enforcement perspective? Well, I don't think we do. Or how does okay? How do <laughs> it's with uh, respect to your question? Uh, it's still the uh, business owner's responsibility to maintain their patrons from leaving if they have an alcoholic beverage. So therefore, uh, that's why you have the barriers for that individual business. So they can't go out into the grassy area unless it's a special event authorized by the Leonardtown Council or Leonardtown Town Hall, saying that. You know, we're blocking this road off, blocking this road off, and now everybody can, you know, entertain themselves within that scope. But say if the Rex has their own partition or cordon off area, they are responsible in, in ensuring that their patrons are not drinking within that area and walking away and then coming back. So they have security, they have ample security to govern that action in the same way with even if the businesses are side by side you can still see the separation especially when i go through there um you know they're just you you know there's a separation but it, 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 the same applies on the other side of the road so it's the responsibility of the business to ensure that it's well delineated each area and even when we have an event where it's open um, for people to bring alcohol to the event, the, the liquor license holders are still required to keep the, um, any alcohol that they sell within their boundaries and we've never had a problem with that. Sure. And, I, you know, most of the time when we've had licensees come in and request for this kind of thing, we've asked for fencing and things of that nature that made it very challenging to, to, to transit the boundary. So, I mean, I, I see there are bound. I'm looking at the pictures, right, that, that the licensees have, have submitted. And, I mean, it, it's colorful, it's attractive, but they're, they're just, they're barrels, right? There's, there's no, it, it, is, it is very, I'll say this. It is a very different sort of boundary than what we have typically required or, uh, you know, in the past. Yes. And but, that's what concerns me. Well, the town of Leonardtown is the town of Leonardtown. And they, they have their, it's, it's not like the rest of the county. They're an incorporated town. Correct. And they have, they have their process. I'm, do you have a safety officer? For the we have a, a town deputy. That's your safety, that does your safety too, does safety inspections and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. So, so that's all on them. And, and the bottom line is here today is regardless if we approve or disapprove, they're still going to have outdoor dining. Correct. There's nothing going to, nothing that we're going to do today is going to keep somebody from being out there at ten o'clock at night sitting there having a Pepsi or uh, or, or or whatever or you know eating sure. dinner. So. And I'm excited for that. What concerns me is is, is then when, when the alcohol becomes involved, right? I mean, that is where our jurisdiction is, correct? Yes. So, uh, and and I agree that there there might be needs to be a discussion about this, about maybe lines. Of, my concern is is when somebody goes to cite somebody, are they in Sweet Bay or Antoinette or or whatever? I think that the the customer needs to know if they're wandering around that they've wandered out of an area that they should be in, and I think law enforcement should have the have the you know know that they what the boundaries are themselves. I'm not necessarily think that they they wouldn't necessarily all would. So we've required in some places to have signage: don't pass this point. Maybe a line on the ground that says, "Hey, you know, don't go past this point." That's only fair for the patrons. And it's fair for law enforcement. It's fair for us. So when somebody comes here and we know that they were off premise, and I guess that's the, the key here is that Agreed. if we're going to license the premise, that spot, then then it needs to be defined. And obviously, it can't be defined with a fence 
um, when you're talking about a public sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is done all over the country. I don't think it's anything new. I mean, certainly it's gotten more popular with COVID and, you know, lots of towns had it in the streets and, you know, had additional. And we're talking about a restaurant atmosphere. We're not talking about a, a bar that, you know, there's huge crowds. I mean, it's all sit down. They have seats. And it's not um, a big crowd. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a different kind of atmosphere than than just a normal bar atmosphere. Sure. Yeah, and, and to be clear, I mean, I love the concept. I love where it's going. I'm excited about it, right? Is, you know, even as a potential patron, but you know, as a as a you know. As a, as a member of the board, right? I've got we've got to think about those other things, right? And I just want to make mm -hmm. sure that that gets out there and that we are thinking about it. Um, you know, in that, you know, that the the the, the people, you know, the the establishments that are requesting it, that our law enforcement that have to enforce it, and that our, our, our town representatives, you know, are thinking about it, right? Because we, the last thing we want is for something to happen and then have this, you know, this cool venue then just end up falling to pieces and, and getting shut down. Um, you know, so, so yeah, so, so when, when these, when they do come and, and we start, you know, requesting for signage and we start making requests for, you know, painted lines and things of that nature, just, you know, don't, don't be surprised or because I think that's about the only thing we, the best thing we can do, I should say, to, to try to promote this. There's the, the if you I, I guess there's photos of the barricades that I mean there it clearly de delineates the area and there's a very just enough walking space between them. Um, I mean I, I'm assuming we could we could probably figure out something for signage that could actually be stuck in the the planters themselves that would be not too unattractive, uh, but would be noticeable. I think the thing is is the actual sidewalk. It's a public sidewalk. You know, it's not, and I and I think there's even questions about can we, as a board, even license that as part of the, of, of the, um, you know, the actual premise because it doesn't belong to the restaurant. Well, in and, some and cases, it, it is owned by the building owner, and but, that's why the well, it town... Well, changes if some town owns some of it, right? Town does, and we... But that's why we passed the ordinance to say that all of the seating had to go through the town. It doesn't matter who owns it. It does have to go through the town, and we have a temporary license agreement that they will be signing per our attorney and um, taking liability for that, and that the sidewalks have to be clear. The guidelines that we adopted are very clear on making sure that people can still pass, that there's there's plenty of room um, for the sidewalk itself. A lot of this is in the parking lot, parking spaces, not even on the sidewalk. There's an open sidewalk on, on each of the premises. So, Mr. Beaver, you have something you weigh in on this? Well, uh, again, I know that Lachelle is just here speaking on behalf of the town, but I guess the question becomes when you're talking about licensed premise, right? We have the actual restaurant and then we have the area that's been designated the, the parking spaces on behalf of the of the respective business. And you have the sidewalk that runs in between the two, mm -hmm. right? Um, the concern I think that the board has is making sure that alcohol stays in the licen licensed areas, which would be, again, the inside or mm -hmm. the, the cordoned off area. And what prevents, let's say, patrons, you know, <coughs> with their with their alcoholic beverages from just hanging out on the sidewalk? And 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 I, and and as you're saying that the sidewalk is most of the time owned by the town. I mean, you're licensing the actual tables. Am I not correct? In that? No, that's not correct. We license the area. Entire area. Yeah, right. Whatever the whatever whatever is on the site plan. So I'm looking at the the drawing. So. So where those the, so those areas are the case for instance of Sweet Bay, which is a permanent structure, we did a an easement. So they have an easement for the entire area, mm -hmm. and then for the ones who were not doing as permanent, we're doing uh, an, a separate type of agreement. So I don't. I mean, as long as they're staying within the area that is licensed, I mean, it's it's up to the businesses to monitor the waiter waiters and waitresses that they don't walk outside the barricades. Right. And I mean, as far as we're concerned, the sidewalk and the portion leading to it. I mean, they have to go back and forth between the business. Right. I mean, it has to stay open for pedestrians. Right. But other than that, I mean. Correct, and that becomes the that becomes sort of the 
the concern a lot of times is that you're you're we're multi-using that space, right? We're we're using it for pedestrians, the public thoroughfare, um, but we're also there will be a point in time when servers, presumably waiters, waitresses, will be crossing that space, and alcohol will then be in that space, right? So. You know, and, and if the town is giving permission, you're saying you're giving easements, you're giving agreements, and I think that addresses to a certain degree that issue. As long as it's controlled, the town is okay, um, and that alcohol is only being consumed and sold within those actual licensed areas, I believe that would address the the concern, I believe. That's not for me to decide. I'm just a lawyer. Um, that's for this board to decide. But and we'll, and we'll be monitoring sure as well that the sidewalks are staying up, and if there's a problem, it's up to us to go and make sh you know talk to the business owner and and uh, I think everyone's well aware of you know the fact that it has to stay open for business would uh, would signage um, uh, uh, no no alcohol beyond this point um, suffice uh, mr. beavers as far as uh, um, you know restriction to the to the uh, because these are these are permanent these are requests for permanent additions to what they already have. No, I understand. I understand that there's no there's no law saying they have to put up a sign. I mean, it's it ultimately you can leave it to the to the responsibility of the individual business owners to ensure that they are only having alcoholic beverages within their licensed areas. Right. Uh, okay. Well, then, can we impose, you know, the signage on the on the individual business owners that that they need to put up signage? No, no alcohol beverages beyond this point. Yes, we could do that. Purview. Correct. That's within the board's purview. Okay. We thank do it you. all the time. Thank you. Question. I don't have any more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, okay, premise change. The Rex, Joseph Curley, Charles Breck, Daniel Mort Norris, requesting additional permanent outdoor seating, expanding into five parking spaces. Please come forward and be sworn in. <sighs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. All right, gentlemen. Uh, do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Okay. Please, everyone have a seat. Uh, state your names and home addresses for the record. Joe Curley. 22531 Landing Way, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650. Daniel Norris, 22680 Cedar Lane Drive, Leonardtown, Maryland. Charlie Breck, 23254 Jennifer Court, Leonardtown, Maryland. Okay, thank you all. <clears throat> okay, would you please present your request? Uh, we're requesting the outdoor stand. I believe you guys have the drawing for directly in front of us the five parking spaces that are as wide as our building okay for clarification on this uh, mr. Curley um, if a patron um, comes into the Rex and orders um, a draft beer or a bottled beer um, can they then walk out into the uh, expanded area, or the, do they have to? The expanded area only contains tables and chairs, as of right now, that our um, servers deliver everything. Okay, to. they are serviced now. So Correct. You would, you would go in and you would sit down, and a server would come to you and take your order, order is that correct? Correct. There's a sign out front saying uh, for outside seating, just check in at the bar and let us know. And then once they do, they go have a seat if there's a table available out there, and then we send a server out to them. Okay. If there's no table, then they simply have to wait, correct? Correct. Okay. 
but they cannot go in, buy a bottle of beer, and then go join their friends out in the seating area, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, as well as um, if they were to leave the seating area, they leave all alcohol in the what you all are requesting for permanent expansion, correct? Correct. In a perfect world, yes, you hope they do. In a perfect world, correct. Okay. Um, Anything else? My Well, my suggestion, once again, because these are permanent uh, requests, is that we put some kind of, uh, impose some kind of signage for those patrons sitting in the area there that no alcohol is allowed beyond this point. I, I don't see where putting tape on the sidewalk or anything is going to, for, for all purposes, I, I don't see what that would do as far as, uh, um, other than add a level of confusion to a patron. I think, I think uh, since these are permanent requests that some sort of signage go up saying no alcohol allowed beyond this point. Hey, Mr. Cole, to add on to that, I mean, I would, I would also contend that there probably needs to be some level of signage inside as well to make, you know, the, the statement was that, hey, if you're sitting outside, you have to be served alcohol, right? You can't just take it and walk out. Um, basically, I think what we're kind of saying is the only people that can kind of transit that sidewalk with alcohol in their hand is is employees of, of the, the restaurant. So I, I'm not sure, I mean... That sounds like a really long sign. I don't want to. That right, sounds right, right. very expensive and obnoxious. I'm not advocating that. So, so you know, I'm not exactly sure what that signage should read. But I do think there needs to be some method of communicating that to to the patrons, right, to ensure that this doesn't. Um, I don't know. But we had a question. Uh, we invite her up to the mic. She's already been sworn in. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, she had her hand up as a question. Well, I just had some information that might be helpful. Go ahead. So uh, several of these restaurants, the Rex, for instance, already had outdoor tables that were sitting on the sidewalk for years, as well as Social has already had tables sitting on the sidewalk and have had service there for years. I mean, there hasn't been signage up. If that's what you're going to want to require, then I think we can accommodate that. But I'm just bringing it to your attention that they have been serving food on the sidewalk. They haven't been serving alcohol. They, ha they have. Alcohol, too? Yes. Okay. On the sidewalk, their okay. original outdoor premise. Okay. Yes. yes. For my time. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay. And But, but patrons were carrying that out there or servers no it's the same rules same. i mean we've had that seating for seven years and this is just an extension of our outdoor seating same rules same idea okay and that sidewalk seating that was approved is adjacent to the building it, there's no right in between yeah right I, up I, against recall. It. I recall right. i recall right. now okay okay so the request now mr curley is to continue with uh the tables on the sidewalk as well as the permanent addition of the uh uh, of the expansion, is that correct? Yeah, I don't know if you have to ask for a continuance of those. He's asking for an extension, extension of, of yeah. his yeah. outdoor seating. The table's are already part of our original plan. That's on that's the side. Okay. He has that already. Yep. Okay. Yep. He's asking for more. Okay. Okay. I Any more questions? And how, how are we under their under their, again, this was before my time when that was all approved. How is that? I don't, because I don't, I don't recall there being signage there now. And so, how are we, how are, I should be asking you this, I guess, how are you managing the, the, the patrons just, you know, wait staff keeping an eye on them and, you know, what? Yeah, in all actuality, it's, it's, Two different crowds. I mean, during the day, you have a lunch crowd, and they're sitting at their table getting food and maybe a beer or a drink or so. And then at night, we have different security members and management that have a tighter eye on the premise. And mm -hmm. in, in the evenings, you know it, it could be more of a situation with people going from place to place and right. wandering around town. And it's, it's always been up to the 
to the business to make sure. I mean, nobody wants to be in violation. Nobody wants to right. have problems. We want to do this forever, not just for one big night. Right. So we always take care of our own site. I think I think at one time, if if my memory serves me correct, uh, Mr. Curley, that you actually had security on either end uh, with the sidewalk there, so that people would not go beyond that barrier. I yeah, think we, I think that was the that's way correct. We we'd like to think that we know what we're getting ourselves into with each individual day and and any kind of party or entertainment we're having. I mean the slow night in the middle of the summer, you're just going to have your waitresses looking at everybody and making sure they're doing what they do, but if we have a special event planned or something, we, we do special security and we, we all take it upon ourselves. Okay. Also, Mr. Cole, you might be recalling when Mr. Curley came before the board asking mm -hmm. for permission to use that sidewalk because he was having Right, that's correct. That, that's correct, Ms. Hildebrand. I remember, I think that was the, the situation Ferrari there. Ferrari request. Yeah, yeah. And you, you've had no violations of, of anything, right, uh, Mr. Curley? Correct. Mm -hmm. And how long has this been going on? About seven or eight years? We've been there for seven years, yeah. Seven years, yeah, okay. Any other questions? Are there any? Con go ahead. I, no, sir. I'm sorry. My apologies. Um, Tammy, are there any conditions um, that you met? Yeah, the health department is still waiting on plan review, um, so they haven't given their final approval. Um, and the fire marshal was just awaiting if the board was going to require something other in that barricade, mm -hmm. which it, you know, that then he would be called in and need to um, chime in on. But right now, it's the way the barricade is set up that the fire marshal said the the planters he does not need to send an inspector out because. People can escape in or out, you know, they can leave that without any anything impeding them from leaving the area should an emergency arise. Mm -hmm. All right. But if there were permanent fencing uh, where you would have to go out of a gate, then the fire marshal would step in and need to inspect that area for safety. Mm -hmm. So the only the only contingent would be the health department. Is that correct, Ms. Silverbrand? Health department, but depending on your if if the board were to impose something other, you know, a, a more permanent fencing or something continuous where people, if if the board ever imposed that, then the fire marshal would need to come out. Then that would be a condition. No, but I'm saying the health department. Health department does still need to look at plan review. Yes. Need what? I'm sorry. Their plan review, the health department decides, has not gone out and given their final inspection. Okay, so we would have to be would have to be contingent upon the health department. The health department approval. Okay, thank you. Um, I think in order to be at least consistent with the way we've we've handled these things for other locations, I mean, I think at least having the you know no no alcohol beyond this point signage. I mean, I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the, the the picture now, and there's not again there's there's not a lot of fencing. There, uh, man, this thing keeps turning. I, I don't think you'd want fencing. I don't think the town would approve <clears> that. It's not going to look good. I mean, the, the the planners are the right thing, right? For for them to to do what they want to do. Um. But but by by doing that, it does, you know, it it creates an open atmosphere, which. You know, you want the open atmosphere, right? But we've also got to make sure that we, you know, that that people understand. That, you know, hey, this this is in fact your confined bar barrier. Doesn't sound like we've had an issue in the past. You, you know, I, I I know you guys run a great business, um, and and you keep an eye on things. Um, but I think just to probably, you know, make sure that everybody's legally covered it seems like just even some simple signage of you know no alcohol beyond this point on those perimeters somewhere was probably just prudent right does that make sense what i'm saying there mr beaver i'm, I'm certainly not the, the attorney but <laughs> no it, it i think it makes sense if that's what the board feels is for the best safety and welfare of 
the patrons and, and you know, and, the community. And, so. and it helps keep the business out of trouble, too, right? I mean, we want them to succeed, right? So, mm-hmm. and I think without, that would probably be the, you know, would not be a, a huge undue burden, I, I don't think, for them to do something mm-hmm. like that. I have one one question or maybe two um did your business fill this application out we did and pardon me we did you guys did and this is your signatures licensee the salt the you signed this document oh tammy there should be an updated one with all three of us isn't there I do have it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have the uh, signage from okay. um, the other two licensees have not signed, but yes, I do have that. Okay. Sorry. Any other questions? Well, that's in reference to the fact that all three applications were the the the, the verbiage on all three applications were the, was the same. Is that correct? Yes. So I guess okay. they they must. We'll get to the next one and ask them who perf- who filled it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they they clearly coordinated for the because they're all after the same end, which is right. understandable. Mm-hmm. Anything else? We have a so um, we have a condition of the health department. Yes. And um, it's been submitted. But just haven't heard back from right. them. So, so do we have a do we have a motion to approve or disapprove? Yeah, I'll make a, a motion to uh, uh, approve uh, the request for uh, extension of premises to uh, the Rex of uh, two two six nine five Washington Street, Leonard Town, Maryland. Um, conditional upon uh, approval of from the health department and uh, the addition of uh, some signage. Uh, uh, around the area, uh, just indicating uh, no alcohol beyond this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'll we have. Su- I'll second that motion. So we have a first, and we have a second to um, motion to um, grant the um, the request from Joseph Curley, Charles Breck. And Daniel Morris, a Norse, requesting additional permanent outdoor seating expanding to five parking spaces, conditional on on health, and also conditional on some additional signage out in the parking lot area, so that the patrons know that they don't supposed to go beyond the the premise. Excuse me. How many? Days, was that 30, 60, 90? Let's go with 90. Don't we normally go to the max? I think it's Mr. Watts's motion. So. Uh, as I was gonna say, the health department sounds like it's been submitted. That should go go quick. 90. Let's, yeah, let's go 90. That should be give you plenty of time. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we have a first, we have a second from Mr. Cole. The first was from Mr. Watts. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? None. Passes. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You all. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Doris. Feel a little bit good. <laughs> Great. All right. Okay. Okay, second will be Antoinette Garden. Jonathan Boss, requesting permanent outdoor seating on sidewalk and three parking spaces. Please come forward. Please swear him in. Yeah. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Okay. Please have, have a seat. 
state your name and home address for the record. Yeah. First name is Jonathan, last name is Boss, and my address is 22790 Goddard Court, apartment 31, mm -hmm. Lenox Town, Maryland, 20650. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please present your application, sir. Um, so same as the Rex, we just submitted an application for permanent seating for the three parking spots out front of Antoinette's Garden. Oh, sorry about that. Did you hear me? Or no, not very well. <laughs> <laughs> so we just um, applied for the permanent seating as well for the three outdoor uh, parking spaces right in front of Antoinette's Garden to continue um, doing as we're doing now. Um, Mr. Boss, your, your, your application is a little bit different in that your outdoor seating ex looks like it extends in front of your neighbor. If, do you have you know any sort of agreement from your neighbor that they're they're okay with that that they yeah they, we have a verbal uh we speak to him often he comes by he has had no complaints um about anything yeah um right mr watts what i find confusing here was the fact that uh, uh wait a minute I'm at the wrong side of the street <laughs> We'll take that too. That's fine. Please also realize he is asking for sidewalk seating. He doesn't currently have that, so he's asking for the sidewalk seating and the three parking spaces. So it, I mean, but it's it's you guys are directly next to uh, Sweet Bay, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. That's where. That's where. But I was on the wrong side of the street. Well, so they're not Which, next to Sweet Bay, but there's the town, town dentist, dentist in between them. Yeah. And and so that's what hurts my head. And so. So I see the sidewalk seating. So based on your diagram, so you're not only looking for the, the five parking spaces out front, but you're also looking for, I guess, seating directly in front of you on the sidewalk. But then what, what is this in the diagram here that's in front of town dentist? So it should just be the tables, the tables in front and then the parking spaces. That okay, we, I'm sorry. Where we currently Antoinette's. have. Antoinette's has the six tables in front of their building. Okay. The other four tables in, directly in front of town dentist, I believe belong to Sweet Bay. That's what they're coming in for. Oh, yeah. all right, so Antoinette's not at the seas. No. Were, weren't we told that these boundaries were clear? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so you're, okay, well, I guess, so well, here's the problem then is that's what's not on his application. So at the very least, I would say he needs to resubmit his application. Regards to the sidewalk, you mean? Well, in regards to what he's got on his diagram as far as what he's requesting. So what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, is apparently what he's requesting for extension of premises is not what this diagram shows. Okay. Right? Let me, let me. It looks like everybody shared the same uh, diagram. Everybody used the same di everybody everybody used diagram. Everybody used the same diagram. Correct. So everybody has. On the diagram I have, Submitted. Let me pass this down to. I see three three tables adjacent to the building. Uh, yep. What? Here. Correct. Yes. And then these six here. Okay, okay so but see, a, on my di line here, I guess. Well, so on my diagram that that we got sent out. So this is all highlighted, right? So that kind of tells me that in in his application, right? Well, for that this matter, now it kind of looks like. Submitted by the town. Uh, okay. For everybody. So, all right, shoot. And I didn't catch that when we were approving the Rex because I guess the Rex did use the same thing. Right. But but do you see my, my concern? Yes. Yeah. Right, is he's asking for, he's like, oh, I just want this little section. Okay, well, cool. But the diagram he gave me gives it for everybody. And we're not approving him for all of those spaces. We're approving him for his specific diagram. You know, his speci so, so, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have an issue approving it, but that would be a, that would be a condition if I could make it. Or, or unless that needs to be done be ahead done. of time, Mr. Beaver. It could be done if there's understood, if, if, if everybody here understood what the request was, we could ask for an updated, uh, uh, another diagram. To be brought and I, I think even the verbiage would have to include those additional chairs on the uh, seats on the sidewalk, the Agreed. tables on the sidewalk, because it's yeah, not if that's, if that's Because that's not in here. No, it's just right. the three parking spaces. Okay. Which yep. brings us back to the whole thing about we didn't, this board didn't license the tables at the recs on the sidewalk. 
Yes, they did. did. Yes, years did. ago. Did. Years we ago. Did. Yes. Before our time. That's all I'm saying. I'm talking about these members. Yeah. So that oh, was, I'm that sorry. was years yeah. prior. But I know, but the discussion was is that we had earlier was the premise. All right. Well, now now yeah. this is now this is now, now the discussion is, is moving from extension of premise over here and we're going to sit there and carry stuff across out of out, off the licensed premise across a public parking lot to another location and serve a customer, right? No. No. A sweet bay. That's not correct. No, no, no. 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 You're no, not no, no. you're not crossing the parking. Wait. Across the sidewalk, but sidewalk. Not sidewalk. But the sidewalks yeah. it, based upon the based upon their application, the sidewalk is also going to be licensed. This I know. This one. This one is. Mm -hmm. The last one, I'm just trying to go back and say the last one was the Rex. Right. Right? And we did not we did not have anything to do with the sidewalk. And, but earlier we had a discussion about the legality of being able to license something that's not necessarily the premise. So now we're talking about... But the, pre the premise, the license premise is whatever you agree it to be. So if the end, you have the indoor building and whatever extension thereof is licensed premise... So the previous board, with regard to the Rex, agreed to license the sidewalk for them to serve alcohol at those sidewalk tables. Right. We've now we've now extended that into the to okay. the parking spaces. That. Correct. Yes. The distinction between the Rex and now Antoinette's Garden here is they currently do not have sidewalk. sidewalk. The sidewalk as a as quote unquote licensed premise. Correct. Right. Correct. That's correct. He's asking for that. Right. And in addition to the to, mm -hmm. the, to the parking spaces, parking spaces. so there wouldn't be so the issue of the issue of transporting alcohol from a licensed premise to a separate licensed premise wouldn't necessarily come up because they're licensing the whole section. Well, understand that? Okay, I'm just making sure we're clear. I'm asking you. I'm still not clear, and we had a discussion earlier today. Right. Did the board have the authority? to license the premise that was not under ownership of maybe not the town we don't right, this discussion right now we do not I believe know. the town i believe the town testified they said they own some of the sidewalks they don't own others and they provided they provided e they provided agreements and easements to okay, the business okay if the it's just as if a if you know, I, don't, I don't know if, if Mr. Boss owns the property, but he's leasing the property probably from someone, and he gets permission to be able to get a license for the license premise. So the sidewalk becomes the only. I think the only distinguishment between those two, between the actual indoor premise and a, an isolated premise is the fact that you still have a public sidewalk, and I think maybe that's what your concern is. Yes. Right? But we have that with the Rex already. The Rex already has that area that's designated for sidewalk usage. So and they and they control it, which so, which I just discovered today. I wasn't aware. Of. Right. So so this would be a similar this this application would be a similar situation. To, well, it, if the, if their application were granted, I know there are issues with the with the site plan, but if their application were granted, it would be basically exactly the same situation as the Rex. You'd have sidewalk tables that are served by servers, and then you'd have tables in the in the in the now parking spaces that would be served by servers. So what was, Tammy, can you tell us what the original arrangement was with the Rex? Now, now, those tables are up against the building. The tables that are up against the building were part of the Rex's premise prior to COVID. Right. And have been, that is part of their current premise. Okay. Mm -hmm. What they're asking for, what the Rex was asking for, um, was to extend that into those five parts. Understand. Okay. I'm just trying to understand what restrictions or what the original agreement was with the Rex? Unfortunately, so I don't recall if the board made any restrictions. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the corporate town of Leonard Town is a little bit different than when you go outside the corporate town limits where there is no um, sidewalk seating allowed, especially you know, in anywhere in St. Mary's County other than within the town limits. The town makes their own rules and ordinances, mm -hmm. and they do not restrict that. 
as I said earlier, I believe the restriction on the wrecks was that they had security at both ends on the sidewalk there when they had an event. Only when they had they the event, event, the special right. event. Correct. The special event. Yeah. Right. So enter that gardens asked them for three chairs, I mean three tables, three flats, I guess, um, in front of their front of their establishment. And the six in the parking lot, which is going to be three parking spots. Now, pre-COVID, you had no tables on the sidewalk, correct? We were we opened in the middle of COVID. Yeah. So everything that we have now, we just strictly adhere to the COVID rules and regulations. So in regards to the traveling of drinks from inside to outside, our clientele always sits. And we've, again, adopted the COVID rule where you can't order at the bar. You have to be seated to be served, and we've continued that process. Um, we haven't had any issues with the mm -hmm. sidewalk um, because, again, it's still open and clear, even with the small tables that we have out there. Mm -hmm. um, and we even had signs up at one point for um, no alcohol beyond this point, as well as smoking, too, to you know make sure that all patrons were comfortable, whether they be at Sweet Bay or um, at Antoinette's Garden. So it's honestly been a lifesaver, so not having right. it would hurt us more than having it completely. So, Mr. Boss, I, I, I believe the chairman was trying to clarify the number of tables where he was looking at the diagram. Can you confirm, yeah, so that, can you confirm that that's correct? Let me check this. Yeah. Three on the sidewalk? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So, I think the diagram, Mr. Mr. Beaver, would have to include the sidewalk. Then, when he, when, when he gives us a diagram, if it, if if we're going to license the sidewalk as part of the premise, then all, each and every one of these diagrams needs to define that parking that 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 sidewalk as being part of the license premise. Okay. Correct. Again, it's for the boards to, dis to decide whether the description that's been presented is sufficient or not. But I would agree that the description that's been provided in the application does not specify um, doesn't specify that they're seeking sidewalk um, is, approval. Is there any way to combine this with the one that we have currently that shows the tables out front? That we submitted when we got the temporary. I, I, well, I think we just. I mean, I think we just need to simplify the diagram. You know, to to make it just either by by verbiage, because right now everybody used the same same verbiage, right? Mm -hmm. I, and and I I probably should have picked up on this when I was looking at the Rexes, but the verbiage doesn't necessarily. I guess I'm okay with generic verbiage as long as the diagram then becomes very clear and specific. But now when I have a generic diagram and a generic verbiage, if I were to hand this to our attorney and say, can you tell me what he wants or any, you know, you know, any logical person, I couldn't hand them this and say, do you know what exactly that Antoinette's is asking for? You couldn't you couldn't determine that, right? We're able to determine that because we're having this conversation, but unfortunately, that that's not going to hold legal ground, right? So, you know, I, so where I'm struggling with is is I don't necessarily want to make them go and have to redo their whole application and come back again, although that's an option, I suppose. But can may I can ask, we may make, ask a question very quickly about the verbiage, Chris, yes, on this? Sure. It says that the town has adopted new guidelines that will address safety, ADA accessibility. Now, ADA accessibility normally means that there is enough room on that sidewalk to accommodate somebody in a wheelchair. Sure. Would that be enough verbiage or no? I don't think that's what not what concern is. I'm not sure that's okay, a, that's not the board member's concern. I think what he's concerned about is the the generic nature of the verbiage does not specify the three the space that he's that the space that they're looking to extend into. I mean if you read the verbiage it's the same as the prior applicant and just talks about placement of concrete planters. So when to me and I would agree with with board member Watts here that when I read that, it doesn't it doesn't say to me that they're seeking sidewalk. 
for, uh, for the three chairs the chairs, uh, three for chairs. the for that space it, it was just, that just connotates to me and then looking at the looking at the the site plan um, again which is a generic site plan it's not specific enough to be able to identify what they're looking to license right right yeah so either by either verbiage by verbiage doesn't... or by picture something's got to say this is what I want and unfortunately right now neither of them do and and unfortunately I didn't necessarily pick up on that with the Rex just my fault um, but even when I again I, I look at I guess at least with the Rex their their picture was kind of just of their place so it, it helped this picture contains again the town Dennis Sweet Bay and his place so so the picture doesn't even narrow it down right it's just it, it's too generic to specifically say this is what I want so whether we you know you know whether we can make you know make it a because the reality is i think we know what he wants but his application doesn't say that and so you know can we can we approve that and say hey it's approved it's approved assuming we were make that motion and, and approve it you know conditional upon clarification being added to the application i mean can we do that or do we need to say yeah you really got to go fix this application and come back i don't necessarily want to make them have to do that but I want to keep us in. I don't want to keep the, us I guess in hot the, water. The either. question becomes: What are you approving at that point? Well, right. Yeah. You, um, if you can word it in such a way that it's very clear that to know exactly the area in which you're approving, I guess that would be sufficient. But I think that becomes challenging. It, 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 um, it does. So I have two people in the audience that would like to. Um, okay. <laughs> So I worked with the businesses to do the applications, and I guess I thought that it would be better for you to have the whole picture since there were multiple ones. I mean, this one is highlighted just for Antoinette's that clearly shows the three tables um, next to the building and six tables in the parking spaces. But the application I have doesn't, ha it, just, it has all of them highlighted. Right. Correct. But the Rex is highlighted too. Highlighted. So Rex I would be happy to. All, I mean, I would be happy to go back and see what she's talking about. Yeah. I mean, I would be happy to go back and redo the exhibits. I understand what she's saying. Um, I would just ask that they don't have to come back again. Right. I mean, I think exactly that we can. He wants. Yep. Yep. Working with Tammy, I think I can get you exhibits for each individual one that only shows theirs. I just thought it would be easier for you to see the whole Steam picture. Come from mm -hmm. So that's a correct one there? Well, this just shows what he's asking. Whoops, I'm sorry. So, Tammy, is this going to be contingent upon the health department um, also approving? No, he's got approvals from everybody, but my question to the okay. board. But I see where she's coming from, where they highlighted each business. Uh, um, can we can I'm gonna try to, uh, if can we make the, it conditional upon an updated drawing like we've done with some other businesses yeah what I was gonna do before. is I'm, I'm kind of writing out my motion right now and I'm gonna try to be very specific and clear in that motion of, of what exactly it is you want right so, right. so uh, I apologize for the delay and give me you know 30 seconds here to maybe kind of maybe get get my verbiage right and then and then, yeah, it'll also be conditional upon just kind of correcting this, but that way, that way we can get this moving forward and, and right. to prevent you from having to redo this and, and come back. It's no, nobody and if wants you, that. And if you do decide you want Appreciate signage, it. you want to include that. I'm sorry. If you wanted signage as well, you probably want to include that too. It, Sergeant Myers would like the floor. Signage. It, signage. Oh, sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Just in case you. I thought you said if I wanted to sign it as well. Oh, you want to sign? You can sign it too if you'd like, <laughs> board member. <laughs> yeah. Something. That too. Something. Um, Sergeant Myers. In, in respect to the whole situation, um, I understand you're you're obligated to make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and things of that nature. But also, you have to take the totality of the circumstances, which not only the diagram or what is printed, but direct testimony such as Miss McKay and myself giving you that has to put forth some effort in reference to how she described what each of the four businesses are wanting to do. So if, if she's described it, it's already kind of like an ask and answered kind of setting because it's recorded and it's part of the hearing. Wouldn't that apply? I would agree that her testimony is definitely considered, but ultimately it's the application of the individual licensee that has to be looked at. 
and even with Miss, in my humble I'm opinion, trying to simplify. No, I understand. She's already described it. Uh, but each each application, right? And I, I, I listened to her testimony, and, and I'm looking at the application, and it's still not clear between the two okay. um, exactly what the applicant is seeking as far as license premise. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Beaver. We're working on a motion. That's cool. Is she writing a book? I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> and save those notes because Susie will need them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need it too. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm sure I could probably, if you give him more time, I could probably make this a lot more eloquent, but I think this will get the point. Uh, uh, oh, wait, hang on, sorry. Um, I just need to write the conditions. And we're not conditional upon health or anybody? No. It's conditional on health. Okay. It's only whatever conditions you impose. Health is checked off. Good. Yeah. Make a motion. Um, uh, that we approve uh, Jonathan Boss and Antoinette's garden for an extension of, of premise to include the three tables on sidewalk directly in front of the store and three parking spaces directly in front, conditional upon uh, signage included no alcohol beyond this point and an amendment to the drawing to add clarity of the of the requested extension mm -hmm. Within so say that one more time, time. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure I can <laughs> all right so I'm going to make a motion for Jonathan Boss of Antoinette's Garden to approve the extension of premise to include three tables on the sidewalk directly in front of store and the three parking spaces directly in front, conditional of signage, no alcohol beyond this point, and an amendment to the drawing to add clarity of the requested extension. Okay. And to be presented within a certain period of time. To, to be presented within 90 days, which would be more than adequate, I would think. Yeah. Might be able to do it in about 30 minutes, right? 30 <laughs> seconds if you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion to approve the extension of premise. Um, let me of Antoinette Garden, Jonathan Boss, requesting permanent outdoor seating on sidewalks and three parking spaces. This would be um, three tables against the building on the sidewalk, three parking lots with a, ta with a diagram showing six flats, um, an updated drawing would um, have to provide signage to to denote where the um, the premise was and when people were outside the area, and um, needs to be provided within ninety days. Is that everything? I think, mm -hmm. so. I think so. Do I'll you understand it, sir? <laughs> Understood. You're the most important one. Understand it. <laughs> you happy with that? Uh, okay. I'm happy with whatever you give us. <laughs> Thank you. I have none. Second. A second, yeah. I know. Okay. I'm sorry. Second? I'll second that. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. Good Congratulations. luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. See <laughs> us. All of you. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, next in the box. Sweet Bay Restaurant and Bar. Peter Lupo, Susan Dreyer, Charles Johnson, requesting additional permanent outdoor seating expanding two parking spaces. Please come forward and be sworn in. Afternoon. Afternoon. Do you, do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please have a seat. State your names and home address for the record. Uh, Peter Lupo, 3049 Aberdeen Road, Annapolis, Maryland. Susan Dyer, 41567 Knight Road, Leonardtown, Maryland. And Chairman, I have a letter from Mr. Johnston giving uh, Mr. Lupo authority to speak on his behalf. Okay. Thank you. Please present your request. Uh, yes, sir. What we're asking for is an extension of our premises with the two parking spaces, if you're facing the building, to the left of the building, directly uh, adjacent to our current patio space. Um, and uh, it has four tables. We've made it very nice. We've put a green space there, um, trying to make the not feel like you're in a parking lot. And um, we're right beside Antoinette's garden, and we have a delineated space used with our planners that we purchased ourselves, planner boxes separating the two spaces. And I heard the uh, the members concern. We all of our seating is hostess seating, so you have to come into the restaurant, ask the hostess to be seated. You're then presented and taken to the table. Servers transport all the alcohol, um, and we don't have people moving around our space. We have expensive glassware. We don't want that. And we certainly don't want anybody leaving with it. Now, your your outdoor seating is um, separate from Antoinette Gardens. There's there's a barrier there. You said yes, sir. That's it, huh? Yeah. Um, Mr. Watts, I I find once again that the uh, the drawing that is included in this package is confusing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we can certainly, you know, when we make the motion to, to try to clarify that, though, this, this one is a little bit, a little bit more challenging, though, in just that because it's not directly in front of the storefront. I mean, I see why it's not directly in store the, front of the storefront because of the, the traffic, right? But, um, you know, do we have we have an agreement from the town the owners of town dentist that they're they're cool with that i mean yes sir we, we do okay. do we have that in writing i don't we have a letter i don't have a copy of it i, I can i'm sure they can present a copy okay yeah so, so i would make anything contingent upon on, on a letter from them um this one is so this kind of comes full circle to to Mr. Chairman's point earlier, right, where, you know, when we extend the premise that would include a sidewalk, right, and now, you know, your servers are transiting from the storefront, you know, over the sidewalk, which is an extension of that existing premise, into the, the, the parking lot area, you know, you've never left the premise, right? And so we can, this, because of the, the, the you know the zigzag nature that you have to that your, your wait staffs have to take they are going to be off premise for a period of time going down the sidewalk into to your your requested seating area right because we're not extending that premise of that sidewalk anymore right unlike Antoinette's where they're just crossing straight in front of it I would so I don't know what kind of legalities that poses for us, if any. I, think the, you, I think the question I have is, I'm, I'm just not sure, based upon, again, the application and the, and the drawing, what, what's being sought. Is it, is the, I see, I'm looking at the diagram once again. Yeah. I see um, the, the Sweet Bay, 26 feet permanent seating that's currently there. I'm presuming they're seeking the four tables that are directly on the, out here in front of town dentist. Are they also seeking for the sidewalk as well? Well, 
I see there's two two squares drawn here, rectangles drawn here, and, and something written below it. I don't know what. I think the problem arises. A sweep bay does have permanent outdoor seating. What's not showing here is the bump out from um, Park Avenue. That's here. Almost parallel to the end of a parking space. Park Avenue bump out took two parking spaces or one parking space. It's not shown here. Um, so. Imagine a bump out from the corner of Sweet Bay, the Park Avenue corner, mm -hmm. coming all the way out into the road and then squaring off to the two parking spaces they're currently asking. That's all on a, the sidewalk goes out that way. Uh. It's not being shown. So technically, they, the wait staff, I mean, I mean, I would assume walking down a sidewalk would be a lot easier than walking in between tables from out straight out Sweet Bay. So, you know, the sidewalk issue could still be an issue in front of the dentist office. The well, other question I have, um, Tammy, is is the sidewalk directly in front of Sweet Bay, is that currently a part of their license premise? Yeah, the sidewalk that you see here. Uh, right, ex yes. including the bump out. Yes. From the, from the, from the very front of the, of the restaurant. Yes. Out. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. The sidewalk includes their current well, it, no, premise. I'm sorry. The sidewalk is not included. They have to have right. ADA access, so they have a bump out. When they, when they first came before the board with their application, they requested an extension of premise out there to create, take two parking spots mm -hmm. and make this bump out. So the sidewalk actually is a lot wider. If you're familiar with the opposite corner where Dos Amigos mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. how that bumps out. That's what Sweet Bay has over there, and it's not reflected mm. in this diagram. Okay. Now, they, they, according to the language that I'm seeing in here, and I assume the town has made uh, ADA accessible all the way down that sidewalk, all the way to Park Avenue, because somebody would have to, if they wanted to get to the other side of Park Avenue, would have to cross through. Right. And then what of these... The, the drawing that I'm looking at, the, these two squares directly in front of town, town dentist. The those? four, oh, what yeah, I don't know. Oh. We certainly would like to. Okay. Please come to the microphone. I'm sorry. So, so this one, this one. <laughs> <laughs> they keep getting harder, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Beaver. We can, once again, we can update the drawing. We can add the seating that they already have on there. But um, they, on weekends, when the dentist's office is closed, they have two tables on the sidewalk against the building. Okay. And so I've actually drawn in the, I can show you it's the drawing. Light. Yeah, it's very light. Yeah. So how do we prove that so on it's a... All contiguous. It's all permanent bump out seating now. So sure. All the Except for the two two additional tables. It becomes a, That's on the side. Right? It becomes the same situation ultimately. Right currently they <laughs> currently they have the sidewalk yeah, that's bumped out. Directly all that it. all that is, right. and this is servable. Uh, sure. Okay. Basically that will now extend oh, in front of the town dentist. Did he give permission right. for these? And out into the parking area. And the town dentist has given right. permission for the town them. dentist has consented. I have a letter saying they do. Okay. Walk down there. The, I have. The challenge. Well, I haven't walked the, down the there. The challenge here is through. the challenge, and I'm I'm doing my Picasso routine here. <laughs> um, the, the 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 challenge is just knowing where their current premises versus what they're requesting. Unfortunately, the diagram again falls a little short. Right. Right. But my understanding is this is their current. Right, it, which is the bump out. Okay. And this is the parking area that they're requesting, and then also this area in front of the town dentist, where they have the two weekend tables, uh, would also have to be included, just as the the sidewalk that's in front of there, currently in front of their establishment, would also is included. The, the currently under their premise. Um, so. so you're actually adding like six tables. Is that? Total of six tables, Total yes. Six. Mr. Watts, uh, Ms. McKay told me also that 
the the dentist that is next to Sweet Bay has granted approval or granted permission for Sweet Bay to occupy that yeah. that sidewalk in yes. front in front of his office. Right. Okay. She has a letter and said that she'll forward that to the office. That might be another contingent. All right. So let me see if I can word this one. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, right? Welcome to, welcome to my world. <laughs> right, and, uh, well, while you're, wor um, while you're wording that, um, and I appreciate you explaining how you're going to serve people, but if next time you come here, you might want to have your own form. Um, I would I would like to see from each. I would have preferred to see from each applicant a, a, what what they're doing. There's there's lessons learned after 18 months or whatever it's been of COVID. Mm -hmm. There's things that work. There's things that don't work. You know, and it'd be nice to be able to see that information and be able to share it with one another because there might be some good ideas that one one business is doing that others aren't. Um, but everybody's not doing the same thing to do the control. You That's know? true. So, um, just a recommendation. Yeah, it makes I think the job I think, easier for us. No, for I agree, example, I agree for you. example, in your application, Mr. Lupo, is it's the fact that the dentist is in between you and, and Antoinette Garden. So that's another complete business entity, and you know. And while Leonard Town. Leonard Town has granted the use of the sidewalk, then it also requires the dentist to approve that or grant you permission, which makes it completely different than Antoinette or the Rex, you know. You're absolutely correct. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I don't know if that, that really ultimately matters to us. I mean, we're, we're, you know, the, the town's actually sitting there saying, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Our concern is... Is it being done legally with the regulations? Alcohol, not anything else. You know, if if it wasn't this town of Leonard Town, we would probably dig deeper into it. It was a bar somewhere, and they were a standalone, and they were near to piers and all that stuff. Then there's public health and safety regards that we would be involved in. But the town is the one that's looking at all these safety issues for you guys. So um, but we're we're just concerned really about. Where the alcohol is? Is it staying in the premise? Is it be, are people, you know, being served, you know, inside the premise to keep it from the party going somewhere else? So, I think the biggest thing is that they have a post that nothing goes beyond this point, so they know where their perimeter is, and your waiters say, "Okay, you can't go there. You got to stay in here." And I think they've all done <clears throat> that. They've all been. I've been to a couple of the places, and it seems like to me they're they're totally in control. They, yeah. you know, but there's always one. There can always be one, but they have to be aware of that. Well, Sweet Bay and Antoinette Garden, there's there there's a little there there's there's really no separation. I mean, it's like one extension of premise, the other extension of premise. You know, that's. A little more difficult, than yeah, but I believe Mr. Lupo testified that they've got a they've got barriers between yeah, them that separate planners, the two. So they, have they delineate in between, between the so two. that it separates the two businesses. Right, but it's, it won't necessarily separate people. No, you're absolutely correct. We use just as a as a simple visual measure, we use different glassware. So Antoinette has a very specific stemware that they use for their wine, and they serve a very specific type. We use a very distinctive, different type of glassware. If one of those people cross over, you can see in two seconds if they're using that. And we, we're very clear nicely, but very clear, hey, that has to stay on that side. And then truthfully, we also ask, people ask us all the time, hi, because they don't serve the same type of food that we do. So they, hey, could I bring my drinks from Antoinette's? Come sit over here. And we say, sorry, no, please, we're very good friends, but you have to finish your stuff there, close out your check, and then we'll do our best to get you seated here. But it is something that we have to do and monitor, but I think as long as you're vigilant, it's not difficult. And most of the guests are really, really considerate. Friends are going to see each other and they're going to want to mingle. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we have a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Has another book. <laughs> yes. I believe we do. 
All right, so I'm going to make a motion for uh, Peter Lupo, Susan Dyer, and Charles Johnston of Sweet Bay Restaurant and Bar for the approval of extension of premise to include two tables on the sidewalk and two parking spaces directly in front of town, the town dentist, conditional upon signage of no alcohol beyond this point on the borders, and an amendment to the drawing to add clarity to the request, also conditional upon the letter from town dentist granting permission for the use of space in front of their establishment to be submitted with the application within 90 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a mouthful. <laughs> now the hard part, me repeating it. You got that? <laughs> Second that and you don't have to repeat it. <laughs> okay. We have a motion to uh, approve the extension of premise for Sweet Bay Restaurant and Bar. Peter Lupo, Susan Dreyer, Charles Johnson, requesting additional permanent outdoor seating, expanding two parking spaces. In addition, um, it's two tables on the sidewalk in front of the um, town dentist and um, conditional on... And two parking spaces. And, and two parking spaces, which would have four flats in it. Um, conditional on uh, an amended drawing um, signage to um, to show when people are off premise, to prevent that from happening. Hopefully, help hap from not happening. Um, and it's a um, to see a letter from the doctor, and lastly, ninety days to um, to get this accomplished. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. We have a second <laughs> discussion. Anybody? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Aye. I think it was work today. <laughs> okay. Next. Social Coffee House and Speakeasy. Sean Coogan, Jr. Requesting temporary additional outdoor seating through October 31st, 2021. Expanding into two parking spaces. Please come forward and be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Please have a seat and state your name and home address for the record. Sean Coogan, uh, 24420 Hillcrest Drive, Hollywood, Maryland, 20636. Thank you. Please present your, your application, sir. So um, asking for the continuance of our temporary outdoor seating uh, that occupies two parking spaces uh, on Fenwick Street directly in front of our business or my business. Um, we currently have, have had um, an extension of premise for the sidewalk that um, two tables um, which I don't know if that's actually on here right at the moment, but we currently have the sidewalk extension of premise granted by the board um, and we're just asking for the parking spaces that connect to that sidewalk um, to extend our already extended premise. So you're asking for two, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just confused. You're asking for two more spaces than what you already have? Or? No, we don't have any. Uh, our current extension of premise is the sidewalk that includes two tables we're asking for the parking spaces that connect to that sidewalk on Fenwick Street they currently they currently have them but they're under covid they were they were under covid now he's asking yeah we've had this area permanent. the whole time not, not the, permanent I, till october i'm sorry if i was unclear i was the sidewalk has always ever since we've been doing this for 4 years has been our extension of premise right. under covid um, we had uh, there's parking spaces through the entirety of it, and we're just asking to make that extend it further until October 31st at, at a minimum. October 31st. Yep. Okay. Why why the uh, the deadline on October 31st? Uh, the town we're working with um, uh, they just passed guidelines just this past Monday, and we're working with them on 
uh, because if you see on the diagram where Social Coffee House and the little kind of rectangle around it, the parking space next to us is in front of the neighboring business. Okay. So we're trying to work on how to handle that. How to deal so with the, the town has given us for until October 31st to okay. come up with a better plan on that. Like or you, for the town to decide on how. So you it. you will have to come back before us again. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that was that was just my confusion because I was like I thought that was what you were doing now, but and yes, well, we, it, we've we've been doing this this whole time. It's asking to go till October thirty first. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Of all the ones we've done today, that should be easy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're only asking for like two parking spaces, right? Two uh, spaces. Yeah, it's the equivalent of two parking spaces. Yes. Uh, on, on Fenwick Street, it's a little different than the other ones you already looked at because these are parallel parking spots, um, right. which I feel like I should ask for more because nobody wants to parallel park, or, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But anyway, the, yeah, just these two parking spots. Okay. Which you already occupy. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Questions? Uh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to add a little <clears throat> caveat. Um, the, like I said, for four years, we've been handling on the sidewalk side of things, um, and it's gone incredibly well. Uh, it's never had an issue. We don't actually have any signage. Um, for alcohol because we are on a sidewalk that um, in the way that we have a bump out down there that it's ADA compliant um, but it is just it we are still utilizing a sidewalk and so having signage like right in the middle of a sidewalk to like so um, I definitely understand the concerns on that but also at the same time just being in the town like it's uh, it's difficult to just have signage in your face at any time and so we just try to be as as uh, Aware of, you know, whenever somebody's seating there. And we also have seating out there from the moment, you know, we're a little bit different than the other restaurants that we open at six something in the morning. Uh, so we have seating out there all day long. Um, and it could be a, no different than somebody drinking a coffee out there or they, they may have something else alcohol wise. So um, it, we've never had an issue with anyone really. It, it's always gone really well and being able to just communicate with the guests, everyone is pretty. Pretty cognizant of that that fact, and so. yeah, and it, and that's and it's awesome, and it speaks a lot to our you know to the people in the in the town, right? That that unfortunately it only takes that one goofball to mess at, it up at, with her, everything you right. do. Yep. I saw no diving sign in two inches of water. <laughs> right, cool time, and, so. and you know I did, uh, you know I I sat down with Lachelle, um uh, to go over this application. So even though all of the applications are kind of the same, um, all of our restaurants, uh, we are very fortunate to have such a proactive town administrator to help us do this. Um, I think that speaks a little, uh, unfortunately it's a little generic in the application, but I think that also speaks to just how much the town and everyone wants us to do this. So mm -hmm. um, sorry about the the you know good background. uniformity of each application, but we thought that um, because it went so easily on the temp when we asked for temporary during COVID, we just kind of thought we could do that again, uh, you know, with our application. So. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think that. Um, he at least, we, his diagram at least matches what he asked yes. for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say it'll be easier. <laughs> okay. Or if we move into the motion part of this asset, is there any con anything contingent? The health department is still going through their review, so he still needs health department approval. And that's about it. Okay. Discussion. Uh, well, so what will make this interesting, right? So, I mean, if we make contingent on upon health, when's, if we do 90 days, that's going to put him past the, where his, his application is. What... Um, Until October 31st. Yeah, I mean, he's only asking for October 31st. What, do we, what is health department? I have no clue. Do you know I, I mean, you honestly, if you guys want to process? do it 30 days, I think that's fine. Of course, the health department's probably got the hands full at the moment. But the uh, the health department's already given um, their approval on this sure. for the first round of the temporary stuff. So I don't see any reason why they would have any issues with anything. It's just a matter of getting them out 
you know, getting the process through. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to do a 30 days, I'm not going to. 60 days. 60 days. I don't, it is, uh, yeah, it's I, August, September, I don't foresee October. any issues with the health department. but Not August 31st yet. Right. Yeah, September, October. So give them 60. Yeah, we'll do 60. Good. All right. <laughs> no, that's good. Okay. <clears throat> Um, if there's no other questions, Mr. I got Chairman. Questions. Moment, uh, well, I okay? got questions. Yes, sir. No. And I've got none. You don't have no. Any? No. So I'm just curious about the accident. <laughs> I was waiting for it to come up. <laughs> I mean, I have seen no reports on it. There's just a video that I've been able to watch on YouTube. It was, you know, was it reported? Yes. It's a very frustrating situation. And, uh, um, Unfortunately, um, the gentleman that did that uh, um, claimed it was a medical situation that caused him to have a seizure, and he has no recollection of the event. Um, and so they never went through with prosecuting it, uh, even though the person drove further down the street, stopped, ripped the traffic cone that he, because we also had traffic cones in front of the area to be, try to get, draw even more attention to the area. He ripped the traffic cone out from underneath the vehicle, discarded it, kept driving. A witness was following, chasing after him. Did the uh, sheriff's all, department or the state police? They investigated respond? it. Yeah, the sheriff's department did. And it just, at the end of the day, the state's attorneys decided that because they had a, a doctor that said, yes, Three years ago, he had a medical emergency or a medical situation where he fell asleep at work, and they said it may have been a seizure. They said they didn't feel like trying to go forward with it, so I, it was out of my hands at that point, and it just kind of is what it is. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's where it's left. Um, we never got any compensation or anything out of it. It just kind of, it just is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but I believe that the, the town representative said that they've put new. Different barriers. Did I hear you correctly? That they, they've they've put up new barriers. He has bar He still has barrels. Yeah. So I have barrels, and on top of the not on top of it, <laughs> but in front of it, I have uh, the concrete planter that the town. Uh, each barrel weighs. Uh, they're 53 gallon barrels. They're uh, filled with water. They're between six to seven hundred pounds, uh, and then on top of it, a concrete planter that's about five hundred pounds. Yeah. Anyway, all that stuff in front of them. So. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So. I guess point being, steps have been taken since that incident yes. to mm -hmm. try to further yes. reduce. Uh, we, uh, we've also done, uh, the, the town has worked on trying to slow down the traffic as well on that street. Uh, so they put a stop sign in on Fenwick Street now. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on uh, doing a bump out, kind of like what Sweet Bay has, to actually bring a, a permanent concrete sidewalk that extends through that area, putting a crosswalk in to connect to an alley there. So there's a lot of stuff that's still in the in the works to happen there. But <clears throat> but yes, we have, we have been doing mm -hmm. stuff. One last question. Um, if it became permanent, has anybody talked about snow removal and all that? How's that going to happen with the parking lots um, you know, occupied and the plow going through it? And we, push we've had that uh, when we had snow this past, um, I and mean, Lachelle's willing to speak, but I, actually, and uh, I guess being friends with this, uh, the company that does the snow removal, it helped. But uh, they actually are great. Uh, they came through and they, they even took the uh, the snow off the top of our barrels. Uh, so anyway, it, yeah. yeah, no, I don't. I don't. No, it's, it's no bearing on this. I'm just curious. You know. Now we, now we, well, I will say one of the snow days, uh, we actually ourselves, we sat out there and, and, uh, hung out at the tables while it was snowing uh, just because the, you know, like with COVID and everything like what else are you going to do to sit out here in the snow and, and uh, so we kept it kept it wiped off but no the, the road crews are great and then we just clear the snow ourselves okay. out of the area just reverse reverse the blade and throw it up on the other sidewalk yeah <laughs> hey do you pin a motion would you like me to make a motion yes go right ahead I figured you were over there pinning it and I was <laughs> well I didn't even have to pin this one this one's pretty straightforward I think so uh uh, I'm going to make a motion uh, uh, for Sean Coogan Jr. of Social House, Social Coffee House, and Speakeasy, uh, for an approval of uh, the extension of premise until October 31st, as requested. 
uh, pending approval of health department uh, for in, within the next 60 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion to approve the um, extension of a premise for the social coffee house and speakeasy, Sean Coogan Jr., requesting temporary additional outdoor seating through October 31st, 2021, um, by expanding into two parking spaces, which they are already occupying under COVID, and they're just asking to make it permanent until October 31st, contingent on health department and um, 60 days to, um, to get that in to us, for the health department. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yes, I'll sir. second that. We have a second from Barbara. Discussion? None? All in favor? Aye. 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 Some unanimous? Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, guys. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay, ABC Liquors and Lounge. We got the Jamaican uh, Grill. Jamaican. No, they have been withdrawn. withdrawn. Huh? Pardon me? Jamaican Grill. I, I I told you, but Jamaican Grill has been withdrawn. They'll be back here next month. Okay. Jamaican Grill is withdrawn. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. ABC Liquors and Lounge. Gary and Marie. Um, Rogo requesting permanent outdoor seating in grassy area and rear of building. Uh, please wear them in, sir. Yes, do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Please have a seat. State your name and home address for the record. My name is Matthew Rogo, uh, address 23560 FDR Boulevard, California, Maryland, 20619. Gary Rogo, 44815 Shady Hollow Lane, California, Maryland, 20619. And I, I have a letter from uh, Mrs. Rogo giving both Gary and Matt permission to speak on her behalf. Okay. Um, I have some uh, a handout I'd like to give to each of you guys just with some pictures and stuff that show kind of what we're trying to do to make it a little easier. Um, I think that we a, have that. Is that fine? Is that okay? Is this what, what is we've this got? Yeah, but I have some more pictures you have something stuff, a little just more in detailed? case you guys had any questions of what we were trying to do. Right. Thank you. Kind of like the tavern, I can't tell you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank old. you. Okay. Thank you, hon. So basically, um, when uh, COVID really hit hard and they offered the temporary extension of premise, we got, we were able to get that for temporary seating, which um, if you look on the first page of that handout, you'll see the black, the building with the black roof is where Nicoletti's Pizza is located. This building with the white roof um, is ABC and we take up four store units. The other four store units contain three other businesses. Um, behind our building, there's a service road that is it. The, all the dumpsters are back there and the business owners tend to park their cars right up against the wall there. Um, so on page four, if you're looking, you're looking towards 235. We have barriers that block the road off to vehicle traffic while we're open. Um, these cars that are parked in that middle picture are outside the barriers. That's business owners' cars. Um, page five, you're looking south towards the new water tower, um, and you can see where the road's blocked off. We currently have three picnic tables um, in the blocked off section. Um, on page six, you'll see what you would be if you're sitting in a tent looking at the back of the building. That's the picture on the left. The middle picture, the door on the right is our main entrance. The door on the left is a fire exit only. And the view to the west is if you're coming out our back door or our entrance, those are the two picnic tables and there is a row of trees that separate us from the Nissan dealer. Um, 
The barriers we were using right now are located in the top left corner on page seven. Um, we would, if we're if approved, we would go with something more sturdy, um, like the pitcher at the bottom. Um, those are four feet high by eight feet wide, and uh, the road is approximately, if I have this, 28 feet. So we were thinking four for each side would put us right up to a privacy fence that we would like to put up. Um, best place to see, besides the site plan, where that fence would go is um, on page six, that last picture on the right. The fence would come in right to the right of this, tr this large tree, and it would run 35 feet behind, right on our property line, and then come down to the road. Um, so what we're asking for permission for, and um, the we have approval from the owner of the shopping center um, in writing um, to allow us to block that service road off um, during hours that were open. Um, so at the end of that service road, there's an extremely sharp right-hand turn, which prevents any large trucks from getting back there. So none of the businesses take deliveries back there. Um, trash trucks come, but they come and are gone by the time we open every morning. Um, so we're asking permission to be able to keep that road closed while we're open and allow people to cross over it to enter the area where the picnic tables are, which would allow 24 people to sit. Um, we've been doing this over a year, um, we have not had any violations. We've had no incidents. Um, we have not had any complaints from the Nissan dealer or anybody else in the shopping center. Um, that road was never used for vehicle traffic just because smokers go, used to congregate out that back door at nighttime. So we never permitted cars to come through that way to use that as an actual way to get, you know, around the parking lot or anything. Um, so we, the, the, uh, the fence that we want to put up is that this is what's shown on the cover. It's a six foot vinyl privacy fence that would prevent anybody from jumping over it. Um, the only way to get around it would be to walk around and hop one of those barricades or climb underneath. Now, we have security seven days a week. We always have, even before COVID. We never stop doing that just because there's nights, there's one bartender, and I don't want one bartender walking out of there by themselves with a lot of cash at the end of the night. So. If it's a slow night, that that bar or that bouncer, they stay right outside the door with a walkie-talkie on, and the the um, bartender has a walkie-talkie. She can call them. Busier nights, like Wednesday, we do karaoke. Um, some Thursdays and Fridays, we'll have entertainment. I will have three bouncers, two inside, one specifically outside monitoring, and. The way we've always kept a tab on who's been in and who's been out is um, we use Tyvek wristbands. They are anti, um, uh, anti tamper. So the only way to get it off is to grab it, pull it, or cut it with scissors. Kid proof. Yeah, we have about 20 different boxes, they're all different colors. I have camouflage ones, orange ones, yellow ones, they all say different stuff. So every single day we switch out what color we're using and then I have a log book, they write the starting number and then at the end of the night they write the ending number. That also helps me to determine how many people pass through the place, not just how many people were there at one given time. But I can easily spot if somebody is inside or outside that doesn't belong in that area. Um, 
the way we do it, we don't have servers, so you have to get your ID checked by the bouncer, get a wristband, come inside and order your drink from the bartender, and then take it outside to an available table. Um, six people at each table, and then the outside area is done until somebody leaves. Um, has it really helped us pick up new customers, but we found that our existing customers really like it. And now with this pandemic coming back, I'm starting to get nervous again because we have not, the bar is not even close to being where we were prior to all of this. So um, we used to be at capacity, I would say maybe three nights a week. We haven't been at capacity since probably January of 20, 2020. So it's, it's a nice thing to offer if it's a nice day. Um, it doesn't get used every day. It, the daytime people who are the same people every single day, they go out there, they like to sit out there and you know, if it's a nice day. Um, but besides that, it's just, um, it's more of a convenience thing for our customers. Okay. Now I know ours is different than, uh, you know, the Leonardtown ones because we are asking to block off a service road. It's not a public road. Um, I don't know if that makes, you know, a huge difference, but, um, that's that's basically what we're asking to do. What are your hours of operation? Hold on a second. Okay. Oh, you, sorry. Tammy? Yes, sir. Do you have anything this is contingent on first? Yes. The only thing I'm waiting for is the finalized plan review approval from Lugum. I just they just emailed me while we were here. Okay. And um, they just need me to drop off hard copies and then they'll finalize it. Okay. So Health and Fire have signed off. I do have proof of that. Um, and it's just that final from Logan. Yeah, and I can get that taken care of very quickly. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Now, member. Okay. What are your hours, hours of operation? We are open every day from 12 p.m. until about 1.30 a.m. Did you all used to have a drive through window? Mm-hmm. Did you? Is it still? Are yep. you still using it? Yep. How does this? How does this affect the, the drive-through? Because I know it's on the uh, the side next to Nicoletti's. The, there's arrows on. They actually you can't see them in, uh, in the aerial photos, but there's the arrows pa spray painted on the ground. So they pull up, and this is how it's always come. They pull up in front of Nicoletti's. There's arrows that point them to come just like right around like that. So you do a, a U-turn. Kind of like, yeah, you just circle around. Okay, okay. And that's yeah, how I they thought, I thought you guys had a, a drive-thru. Yeah. yeah, that's still it. Yeah. 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 Um, how much, assuming you got approval, how much time uh, would it take to procure uh, your your barriers and then to be able to get your... Um, yeah, your your fence built. So I I've already had quotes done for the fencing. Um, I would probably need. It, they're having a little bit of a hard time finding materials. Um, so I would probably ask for like a three month condition. You know, three month uh, time frame to get that built, and then um, we're gonna fill that whole fence in area with blue chip gravel, and then put the picnic tables on top of that. Sure. Is there outside lighting that you have planned? Yeah, we already have. We have massive lights that are attached to the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. They're like big mm -hmm. floodlights that come on automatically when the oh, sun okay. goes down. We're increasing. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah adding I remember more. it we're used adding to be, more also. It used to be really dark yeah, out no, back. Yeah, no, it's not anymore. It's, it's pretty <laughs> well lit. Um, and as of right now, I do not have a camera out there, but I absolutely will have a camera out there facing <laughs> that whole area just in case um tammy and, and mr beaver is there any way that we can just 
take this package and make this a part of his application? Yeah, I, he, he, it is yeah, part of the record you, now. Yes, yeah. Okay, good. I have a copy. Perfect. Can, can we then also maybe use this as like a how to for other people who are doing it? <laughs> <Is>, well, <laughs> I understand. Pretty legit. I do um, understand. <laughs> I mean, because everything. I, I, I mean, it's just it's just very clear, right? You know, what your plans are, your hours of operation, how you're going to operate it, your safety per, uh, measures with the wristbands. I mean, it's all just it, everything's spelled out, right? I mean, every every everything yeah. that we would normally ask, right, is all spelled out here. So, you know, thank you. It's I obviously very well thought out. You've obviously put a lot of effort into yes, thinking this through. I, I put a lot of time um, into that. And um, so, uh, yeah. So I mean, I, all all that. I based, because his application is so good, I don't have that many questions. Um, just I just wanted to point that out because it's legit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. And you said you did have a letter from your Jason business owners that they they were cool um, with not the off. not. I have spoken to them verbally. Um, I do have a letter from the owner of the shopping center who also owns Nicoletti's, okay. and he, which Tammy has a copy of. Um, it's an amendment that, to the he, lease. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was an amendment to our lease. Good. All right. So as long as it's in writing, it's yeah. in the application. That's all I was wondering about. Um, and then again, the only other thing, your your borders are going to be obviously pretty pretty well obvious. Um, but and I again, don't just have back any problem with putting a do not drink beyond this this uh, point <laughs> on that everyone. That's exactly where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that was that was the only question I had, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Barbara? No questions. I've got nothing. Okay. I drove it today, but I was there too early, I think. Oh, yeah. They, they probably, uh, weren't up, uh, probably weren't up yet. <laughs> I did not see the arrows for understanding the use of the driveway. They right? probably need to be redone. They are there. I just saw them the other day, but they're going to have to be... Uh, well, I'll... Fresh Talk enough. to the landlord and see if we can get them bigger. This shows I don't have the experience going to use your drive in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we used to have a stencil that we used to use. Yeah, right, right. That's there, but we'll have somebody. Yeah, um, we'll have somebody make them more noticeable. Any kind of problem with uh, snow removal? In that? No, so we typically, I, what I've been doing was last year, we didn't get that much snow, but I just, sh if we had it closed off, I just shoveled the, the, the little area out myself. Um, if it's a little snow, the snow plows don't even come back. They don't right, go right. and run through there. So, well, that's just the added added barrier there. If you, yeah, if yeah. you get the yeah. <laughs> to the outside area cleared. Right, right. Know. So the tents will be here when you're done. So right now, that's what we're we're gonna do that for a while um, until I c we can figure out some kind of more permanent structure to put up there. Um, at which point, I would have to go back to the you know land use and growth and get a permit to do something. But um, for right now, I think we're just gonna stick with the tents, especially since winter's coming and people aren't gonna be out. They probably won't Are be out there very much. The stakes in the ground? Yeah, they're now they're staked in. How many tents have you lost? <laughs> About <What>? fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's been hurt. No, no. Of them's taken off. We try to get them not to sit out there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Beaver, do you have any concerns? Quite, um, no, I think we're okay. <coughs> Mr. Myers? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm going to make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. Okay. I'd like to make a motion uh, for uh, Gary and Marie. Uh, Rogo of ABC Liquors and Lounge for the permanent approval uh, of the extension of premise uh, contingent on uh, final approval from land use uh, and signage. 
uh, for a period of uh, 90 days to have the uh, to also have the, the fence uh, erected and the barriers procured. Mm -hmm. Does that have to be part of it? Here he has barriers. He's just saying that he was going to do better barriers. Okay. Barriers. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the um, ABC Liquor and La Liquors and Lounge. Um, Gary and Marie uh, Rogo requesting permanent outdoor seating in grassy area and rear of building. This is a 90 day conditional approval based on um, Logum and um, installing the fence. Signage. Well, Signage. Logum will sign off on that fence, right? That's part of your site plan, so they have to sign off. Well, I'm repeating that. his motion. So, fence and um, and the um, upgraded barriers. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yes, sir. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Discussion? None? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you guys Good very much. Thanks yeah, thank you. So the officer changes. We the just need a motion. Okay, need a motion to um, to approve the. I mean to delete um, Gene and Hammett and add um, Deborah Pullen to the North End Gallery. Do you have a motion? I'll make the motion to uh, to uh, delete Jean and Hammett and add Deborah Poulin from the North End Gallery officer change. Okay, we have a, a motion to. <coughs> I'll, um, sec I'll second that motion. From, we have a we have a motion from um, Member um, Watts, and we have a second from Member Cole. Discussion. None. All in favor. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. And the other one is um, St. Mary's Gas Station, deleting Kim P. So and adding um, Go for it. <laughs> um, Tizen, I don't know, So and and, and Zhu Ha Lin. And my apologies for the um, poor Chinese. Um, do we have a mo you said we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion uh, for officer member change of, by deleting Kim P. So and adding Zun So and uh, Zui Hua Lin of St. Mary's Gas Station. We have a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Unanimous. Thank you. Who is the second? Barbara. 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 Okay, next on the list is the um, board administrator report. Rules and regulation changes, HB 12 and SB 205 discussion on adoption. Okay, so language has been drafted for the board um, upon your request um, and upon the <clears throat> recommendations of the work group, the task group that was um, put together at the last board meeting. Um, should the board decide to adopt HB 12 SB 205? So um, most of the language is uh, verbatim of the bill itself. Um, to clarify, um, the beginning of the bill that applies to on sale only licenses, we determined did not apply to St. Mary's County because all of our licenses are actually on off sale 
the board, the licensee, perhaps the corporation that the licensee is under, does restriction to on sale only, but they are not, it's not a separate license. It's not a separate fee for that license. Whereas I think the language here with some counties do have on sale only licenses and on off sale licenses, which they charge separate fees for and they're classified separately. We don't have a separate classification for on sale only for, for bars and restaurants. So the beginning of the legislation, um, section B, where it says this subsection applies only to a license that authorizes the sale of alcoholic beverages for on-premise consumption only at a restaurant, bar, or tavern. Everything under Section B uh, can be ignored by this board since we do not have any licenses falling in that category. So I think that makes it a little bit easier um, because the only thing then that the following section for on-off-premise allows is um, mixed drinks or cocktails for off-site consumption. Not, does not talk about beer or wine <coughs> being delivered or for curbside. It's because these businesses are already allowed to have their patrons come to the counter and purchase beer or wine if they so desire to sell it that way. We do have many businesses by corporate charter bylaws that are not allowed to do that anyways. So, any questions? Um, no, I don't. Anybody else? So, has everybody had an opportunity to read this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's do some discussion about this. Anybody have any concerns about it? No. No questions? No. Should this be read into the record, Mr. Beaver? No. Nope. Doesn't have to be read into the record. Okay. So I'm asking for a motion um, to adopt the sales and delivery of off premise consumption permit for. Um, also titled the COVID recovery legislation, section eight. Um, do I have a motion to adopt it? I'll make a motion that we adopt section eight COVID recovery legislation. I can't even talk. <laughs> 8.01 sales and delivery for off premises consumption permit. Thank you. Barbara's made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Member Watts seconds the motion. I have them all. <laughs> Discussion? <clears throat> none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes. Thank you. And because we're running out of time, I'm just going to quickly reiterate that um, the inspector and myself are looking at the RAS program. Given the current um, status today of the county going back to plan, um, level two for the pandemic, um, kind of puts a kibosh on our plans to reopen RAST, I think. Uh, we'll, it'll, it's a wait and see right now, um, but I am going to move forward, even if we open up RAST, to have a virtual version because we do have licensees that live in other states that need to take this and their travel may be limited. So that's all I'm going to... And it also puts, puts businesses in a bad spot because it's probably their, it's their primary training. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've got to get it done. We've got to get it done, especially now with COVID extra outdoor premises, possibly an off-site, you know, the off-site consumption permits. I, I think it needs to get rolling. So we'll do the best we can. And of course, we're always open for questions and they all know that. And where did my agenda go? I think next is going to be. Um, <laughs> he's he's on deck. <laughs> he's ready. <laughs> yes, the ne next is Sergeant Myers, please, sir.
Hey, I'll do I didn't it. forget you this time. That's cool. <laughs> Even if you did, I know you're thinking of me. <laughs> uh, bear with me, I don't have my glasses. Uh, last month, I did nine alcohol checks, um, which also, within the scope of the alcohol um, enforcement, you know, even though I haven't put this in years past, but I, I do bar checks, you know, even though you see the like retail establishment checks, within that scope is bar checks and you go to the parks and, you know, like we have to go to Myrtle Point when they have complaints about drinking on the beach or things of that nature. That usually isn't so minute, it doesn't go into the reporting, but I figured I'd mention it to you so other people would understand the full capacity of what we do. And uh, recently, it was the, um, bear with me, um, Potomac Jazz and Seafood Festival, and um, also down to kick off the Fenwick Street type jazz festival also. So we had personnel there, everything went well. We did, um, just I was talking to Susie the other day in reference to the because it is St. Mary's County, you have the lawnmower races, and that was a, a very good event. A lot of people, um, I guess we were so incognito that Susie didn't even see us, but that's fine. Um, we had uh, 14 DUI arrests for the month, and um, I attended uh, two meetings, and that concludes the report part of it. Um, I already kind of said this <clears throat> earlier, Tammy had uh, inquired, thought you wanted to know in reference to the Leonardtown Square. And like I said, you know, it did involve the one that you were talking about, the barrel accident. And um, the others were just like minute. Uh, one was a backing um, fender bender and the other two complaints associated within that one year scope was uh, traffic complaints, you know, a big SUV trying to park in a little bitty economy sized spot. So they called that in. Other than that, the, you know, I think everybody's kind of adapted to, uh, you know, them having the COVID extensions. So they're used to it. So they, they pay particular attention. The only thing that was a curveball was when they actually did the uh, re reorganizing of the, the traffic stop signs and things of that nature, which I think accommodate the speakeasy because people aren't r ripping and roaring through there now because there's a stop sign. Mm -hmm. So I think that helps out in your perspective of, you know, like, hey, how are you settling this or whatever the case may be. And of course, um, you know, unfortunate things happen. Uh, one in particular, I guess he asked for this. I, I looked up... Um, you know, the country bar last drop because we had an incident there. And uh, with, with it, I'm, in, I'm not gonna go in depth with it because that's dealing with our criminal investigations, which you're very familiar with the person in that sector. Um, but I ran computer automated dispatch or had our uh, administrator do it and there's dates listed since you know the beginning of the year that we've been called there. Um, <clears throat> I expressed in, in my uh, attachment that I gave Miss Hildebrand. Um, basically, the incident uh, reports. I, I've I've reviewed it each and every one of them, and it is apparent that the last drop country bar personnel have utilized their due diligence in trying to thwart any criminal mischief by at least attempting to uh, control a situation themselves or if it's out of their control, they contact us. And in all these situations, they have done so. And uh, I, I, I emailed it to her, so if you wanna kinda of see it on the sidebar, uh, each and every thing, I get, there's explanation that I drew from the report. And just uh, two of them were like, there's a specific DJ that Miss Hildebrand knows about, and he has a following. So there's a lot more people that it's an influx of personnel from like PG County coming with him. So it's not that they're they're causing a disturbance while at the 
establishments when they're leaving they don't necessarily want to leave they want to still talk to their people but the bar wants to close so in trying to g induce them to get out of the parking lot it's a no-go so they end up calling us and then we you know act appropriately and that was twice of course that was on uh, April 11th and June 5th and then there was one uh, March 26th it was the oddest thing is it really before anybody uh, got there it was the bartender and a, a DJ that was going to be playing at Toots he decided to go over to uh, the last drop first and he was asking questions about hey how's their system their music system and there was a one only one patron in there and uh, while they were talking about music he had uh, requ requested him to play a certain song and neither one of them knew it so the guy got up and slapped the guy in the back of the head and rolled out so that was the assault part um, so kind of out of the control of the bar right you know you don't expect somebody to like get you know aggravated because you don't know what he's talking about or what song that he wants to be played and he's the only one in there as far as a patron so you know when you see assault it's not necessarily what you see like it wouldn't be the fault of the establishment is what I'm getting at I guess sometimes you have domestics out in the parking lot that's still not a fault of the establishment so as long as I, I as I feel as long as they're giving their due diligence and trying to keep it safe uh, get people out when they're supposed to be off the premise uh, no over service no underage purchases you know as long as they stay within that and even you still have the consideration of loud noise because you got you know toots is right next door but then with both of them rolling you have neighborhoods just beyond like uh, Tom Hodges that area and they get here they complain but there's not really a St. Mary's County rule you know I mean there's a code for land use and growth management in reference to noise abatement but uh, you know it's not like you can forewarn them and then that's when it becomes a situation because if you've already warned them then if they fail to you know take heed to your warning then we have a, a situation of criminal kind of thing but it hasn't got to that point yet and so uh, so when you read or see stuff in the paper about that specific bar hopefully I've uh, explained myself so you will have knowledge to know hey okay they were basically it, it you know the situation occurred because they were doing their job they asked for the ID uh, gave some bogus type ID and he said well you're not going to have entry here so they got aggravated with it because they were denied at toots and so now they're really aggravated and you know I'm not trying to pray the case out right now but that's kind of where it went to so they were doing their job and unfortunately somebody acted out of character or even out of their mind to do something like that but so i just wanted to give you that spill thank you appreciate and it. that concludes my report excellent thank you sir yes sir okay licensed beverage association not here did they submit anything uh no sir they didn't have anything um they were just listening for the HB 12. And uh, Community Alcohol Coalition to give us anything? No. Uh, anybody in the board want to have a few minutes? Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn this meeting. Of Barbara Hill makes a motion to adjourn. Second. Mm. <laughs> we have a second motion from Member Watts. So we adjourn at need a vote. 1648. Need a, need a vote. Need a vote. Vote. Oh, that's right. <laughs> vote. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.